God help me. And people say, why don't you do panel shows? That's what people say to me. They say lots of things to me. Sometimes they say, even they say, why don't you do panel shows? <laughs> you have to remember, maybe we all needed to be reminded, the damage. Hi, I am Adam Something. Nice to see you all. Wow, that was... I, have a, I have that channel with those videos on YouTube. He does videos with trains. Lots of trains. Oh, Air... there's this. Sparky. Hey, everybody. I'm Aircraft Sparky. Um, yeah. Here to pull out puppets, maybe. We'll see. Awesome. Fabian Liberty. Uh, yeah, I'm Fabian Liberty. Uh, Anarcho-capitalist. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Fabian Liberty. Fantastic. Kraut. Hey, morning. Um, Dylan's editor just woke me up. I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Lecture fan. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm lecture fan. I'm a, I'm a lawyer, practicing lawyer. I stream on Twitch at night. I do politics. I'm conservative. Find me on X, uh, YouTube, you name it. Fantastic. And a Vouch, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm Vouch. I'm here to wrestle up some good discourse. Wrestle up them discourses. Uh, Anamarchy, how's it going? G'day, it is a very tired Australian. I, um, I make history videos on YouTube and fight people on Twitter. Hello. Do you by chance have like a, like a VTube avatar or something you can put up? Uh, no, unfortunately I do not have a VTuber avatar. Okay, so. well, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive it because you're Australian and that's enough of a burden already. Um, more perfect yep. union. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm the More Perfect Union. I sometimes stream on Twitch and other channels. Uh, I'm a constitutional conservative, um, bane of all leftist existence, and i um, glad to be here. Uh, by the way, it's nice to see that you managed to avoid getting shot. So, so far, at least. Okay, don't count me out yet. Uh, wow. so we've got uh, a great show lined up tonight. Don't fucking jinx it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As much as what I the fuck? as much as I disagree, knock on wood, I jackass. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. <laughs> I'll be, I'll, I'll be fine. No one's ever got hot, hurt in a war. So we're gonna get into the first topic. Uh, the first topic today, uh, speaking of war, has to do with American aid to allies and whether the United States should continue to provide aid to allies. Uh, this, of course, is being talked about a lot because of the over $100 billion aid package to, while primarily Ukraine, also includes aid to Israel, also includes aid to Taiwan, and some security uh, investments in the Indo-Pacific region, primarily um, uh, uh, put there to counter uh, Chinese uh, naval expansion. And my question to all of you guys is, is... Uh, is Ford aid a worthy investment from the United States? And you can talk about any of these aid packages or any parts of the recent aid packages that you want to when talking about it. But of course, remember, we have short amounts of time, so try to keep things punchy, okay? And we're going to leave it to the room. Who wants to go first? I'll do it. Okay, Sparky. All righty, uh, plain and simple. We concern ourselves more with other countries' borders than our own. Until we take care of our own borders, no one should get a dime. Okay, well, there you go. Anybody wants to take that? I think uh, I think foreign aid is where it meets <laughs> where you can where you can make a clearly defined um, alignment with with uh, our objectives and goals uh, as a nation protecting and projecting peace or democracies or fair trade, reasonable fair trade. Uh, I think that you can make a case for that. I think uh, the Ukraine issue, um, while I'm generally supportive of um anybody who is against russia <laughs> um i think the problem that a lot of people are starting to feel with ukraine aid is that there's not enough um oversight uh the the chances of the, the amount of corruption that exists within their government structure is still pretty significant and there hasn't been a good accounting for it so i think we need to have good controls over uh, the audit process regardless of whoever we provide aid to and we need to further we need to make sure that we have a very finite defined mission objective before we give anybody money okay can we can we throw it to somebody who maybe takes a different perspective than these two i don't want to just have all the same people oh, bringing in my over pleasure the uh okay no no country is an island we all benefit from global stability International relations and diplomacy are a preferable substitute to war. There is no way to wall yourself off from the rest of the world, and so long as the rest of the world is a part of the one that we're on, we need to be concerned with its stability. Foreign aid's a great idea. 
We should do it. We should do lots of it. We should ingratiate countries to ourselves, make ourselves look strong, the shining city on the hill. It's good for America. It's good for everyone. Of course, you got to do it for the right reasons. I think Israel is making particularly poor use of our money right now. But generally speaking, yeah, there's no way to just wall yourself off. The world comes crumbling down due to instability. That hits us too. So we got to be responsible stewards of the power we have, which is at this moment quite a bit. It, it's right. very interesting. It's very interesting to see how socialists always have this same notion where conservatives Good or ones. libertarians or limited government types um, don't want the government to do something. And so the claim always becomes that, you know, and, and, and this goes back, you know, Hayek noticed this, right? It's like, it's as if the socialist believes that we don't want to produce grain, right? The idea is, is, is a false dichotomy. It's a, it's a fallacious argument that Vosh is making. This idea that there is either we wall ourselves off from the world or we spend money that is completely wasted in inefficacious ways towards foreign aid, which is it, it, which can be done better via charity and private industry. And by, as you know, more perfect union stated, if you're going to have a minimalistic state, you can protect your trade routes and certain things of that nature. But this idea that we're going to spend hundreds of billions on corrupt nations that don't feed their people and we just kind of do it year over year over year or we're going to fund never-ending wars without any accountability or uh you know almost a complete lack of oversight to the tune of five hundred thousand dollars for every upper middle class family um is absurd and stupid in okay europe, we, uh, in europe in europe we had something that we called the peace dividend which was when the cold war ended we assumed there would never be a large land war in europe ever again as a consequence, almost all countries here cut the military budgets. And then we either invested the surplus money into social development, social programs, or we cut taxes. And now we all have egg on our face. There's only very few countries in Europe that didn't cut the military spending, like Greece, Norway, and Poland. They don't have egg on their face. The brutal reality that we in Europe face right now is that we have to build up our militaries and our defenses again, that we have to be able to face off an aggressor country that wants to divide up Europe into spheres of influence. Also, in I'd moment, like to point something out here. I'd well, like to. Wait, like can, we, can we can we let Kraut finish his statement okay. quick, and then we'll throw it over to Anamarki? Okay. In, in this moment of crisis, we have no choice but to ask the Americans to send us weapons because we don't even have enough of our own because we neglected defense industry to such a point that it is become it's proving difficult to gear up the factories again to make basic ammunitions. Mm. We're not just taking aid from the Americans, we're also taking from the Canadians, the Australians, the Japanese, the Koreans. The Koreans have been especially gracious, giving us a million artillery shells for the Ukrainians, which is, and I want to point this out, the aid isn't money. It's literally physical shells, it's guns, it's tanks, stuff like that. And I've, the only counter proposal that I can make to those who criticize it is, yes, we're currently taking your aid, but we will be gearing up our own defense again. We will be coming back up on the R2 feet because it is very clear to us here now that the peace dividend is over. Right. I'd like to jump in quickly into this. Some, well, some, quickly, uh, though, Anamarki, I did say oh, Anamarki oh, would go next, and then right. we'll see what he says, and then maybe you. Okay, go. Okay. Rather, I'm going to sort of be a, a bit testy. Maybe it's just because I got it's first thing in the morning. But I find it ironic about being lectured on the, uh, del on the deliberate reliance on the government to do things and how a self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist can't recognize what's called a good investment. You've completely defanged the largest geopolitical threat in Europe, or at least heavily damaged it. You've rendered it completely incapable of challenging the United States in the uh, world hegemon game, if you want to use the term, without a single American citizen who didn't volunteer for Ukraine directly dying, not a single active duty US military person beyond special operations who we don't know about being deployed, uh, and you've spent what amounts to just under 2% of your entire budget for one year. You've spent less than 20% of your discretionary defense budget to destroy um, something like 3,000 tanks, 5,000 APCs, kill 100,000 Russians, uh, and you've done basically nothing. You've, 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 you've done nothing. In fact, you've saved money. The other big issue for me is when you're talking about uh, aid to Ukraine in terms of material aid, a lot of the weapons and stuff that the United States has sent have been from their reserves and stockpiles. 
You are paying people to maintain these. You are paying private companies to maintain these using government money. They are no longer needed to be maintained in those bone yards and those storage facilities because guess what? They're out doing what they were built to do, which is kill Russians. Now, on the next side of things, you're going to need to replace that. Europe is going to need to replace all the okay, aid base. I do want to say just do try to tend to wrap it up because we only have so many people. Okay, so many okay. in which case, let me, let me put it this way. Long story short, all that money is going back to the private sector. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, they're going to make a killing. They're going to employ Americans. And those Americans are going to pay taxes. They're going to spend money. They're going to buy shit. And that's going to stimulate the American economy. This is a net benefit on every level for the Americans, even if you take out all the other factors. It's just an, it's after, just a win. After Adam something, may I respond to this this absurd uh, tard uh, attempting to explain economics? Uh, you know, uh, Adam, I'm going to ask uh, to you wait a moment. Have, have Fabian just directly respond sure, sure. to make it easier. Okay. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Su super quick, right? So th the idea that you attack the idea of an ANCAP being anti-war to be pro-war for Lockheed Martin really shows that you don't know what ANCAP is, but setting all of that aside the idea that it is a good investment um that 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 we can look at how much money is spent and then calculate it afterwards is you know a very a very very poor misunderstanding of economic theory um the market is the best way to dis to to allocate resources the market is the one that has price control uh the state cannot solve the economic calculation problem the state is incapable of solving the local knowledge problem and so that money is going to be wasted and of course it's going to end up in the coffers of lockheed martin and no ancap or most americans want that and the idea that oh well don't worry it'll create jobs i mean that might work job creation might work on you know, 1980s and 1990s conservatives that would vote for this dumb idea of like, it'll create jobs, but it doesn't work on me, buddy. Like, private no, economy fuck, enjoys fuck, fuck when war. private corporations make profits. <laughs> okay, so Anamarchy, uh, if you wanted to respond to that, we can give you an opportunity to respond to that, or we can just throw it straight over to Adam. State something. money. Like, shut up. Like, so stupid. No, it's, it's a straightforward calculation. It's a straightforward calculation. The United States is spending, proportion to what it has, nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's barely spending anything compared really out of its total budget. Yeah. And what it's generating, what it's generating in terms of a geopolitical result, you're getting your money's worth easily. Easily. And yeah, sure, you can talk you about the dubious morality. It's, so, like, it's, just, it's on, we've got photographs. That. We've got photographs. Can I, of can I jump in on this? Of burned out that's that's not how basic economics works. Wait, 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 wait a second, okay. I, Adam something, I love you, oh, but I'm going to have Vosh quickly comment, then I'm throwing it to you. It's and just to my, handsome, right. my yeah. handsome friend no Adam something, hey, whom I hey, seed Dylan. every moment but this one. Um, <laughs> if, if we're going to center the discussion, it should be on reality, not fantasy. Every country on the world has a state. Every country in the world's state manages its own resources, including war. The idea that the argument here would be about, oh, what if, um, what if the private sector did for it? Um, what if, uh, what if the private, what if the market decided, shut up, the market decided. The system exists. We, we we live in a global economy. Turns out corporations benefit from a state that protects them, yeah, that establishes a system like, by which they're defended. Argument. Yeah, the argument that I'm making is that you don't have one. You're, what is this? Like, can you point to no, any you're, place you're, in the world I where the state has subsisted? Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, dumbass. Wait, 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 and then I'll give you Fabian, and I'm so sorry, like 10, 50 seconds to respond. Then I have to throw that out of me. Just, I'm, 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 I'm just, me, I'm, me, I'm feeling up me. my crystal ball right now, and I'm foreseeing 57 questions that are answered. But what if we let the private market do more in some abstract, nebulous way that's never been done because it doesn't work? I cede everything to Adam something, somebody with something interesting yeah. to say on the subject. Yeah. No, okay. I cede it. Of course. I cede it. Yeah, of course. The conscious wait, moves. Wait, 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 all right, so uh, so Fabian sounds a bit like those those like uh, Twitter tanky lefties who, but he just uses market instead of like a communist manifesto or something. It's pretty funny. Anyway, so uh, we'll, uh, make uh, a f argument. Oh.
I, I'm on it, okay? So, um, just be patient. So, uh, the arguments uh, for supporting Ukraine, for example, mm -hmm. uh, from the pre pure business perspective, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a no-brainer, right? So, one of the main export materials of the U.S. is security and stability, which which the U.S. accomplishes through its military. And uh, this, of course, has a number of uh, easy-to-see business, uh, positive business effects. Uh, peace and stability, it turns out, is good for a business. It is good for investment, right? Uh, this is a no-brainer. Uh, also, uh, the Ukraine war uh, just happens to be a great advertisement for uh, the U.S. weapons industry. You know, when you see those thousands of Russian hardware burning, uh, just like torched by, uh, not, 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 even, not even top much U.S. Uh, hardware, but like just like 20, 30-year-old stuff. Uh, that's that's great for uh, the U.S. economy. Now you might be salty about the fact that that uh, uh, I don't know Raytheon or whatever are, are like stay very heavily state adjacent slash these like mammoth corporations. But yeah, that's that's how the that's how the economy works currently. That's how you achieve growth. You know, as, as so if you're not some like uh, unless you're some kind of a degrowth weirdo, then you should be happy about this, right? The other thing is no. weapon weapon aid. One second, weapon aid. Uh, when we when they say okay, we sent Ukraine, you know, five billion dollars worth of aid. That's not five billion dollars. That's five billion dollars worth of aid calculated based on the stuff, the pre-existing stuff uh, that you guys send them, right? So if we send them like five hundred M one one three APCs or something, well, then that's calculated into a, into a into a dollar-based uh, number. Even though those vehicles, they have been used by the US military before, they've been retired, they, they have served their time, and now you're just passing them off to someone. That comes off, that comes out as a, as a monetary item uh, on, a, on a budget sheet. Meanwhile, in reality, it doesn't really uh, mean an, an actual Is expense for the US. That? Okay, sorry? sorry, wait, one second. I need to take a pro-business position as well. Uh, Hippy Dippy has made one change financially, and that is in between topics, the number one donor between topics will be able to ask the cast one question. Uh, you know, if I'm going to bring back Hippy Dippy and herd these cats, I'm going to make money. I'm demonetized. OK, uh, continuing, I want to throw it over to I, I'm sorry, Fabian, but you, you got a lot of back and forth. I want to yeah, make sure lecture fan fine. gets to talk lecture fan and yeah. then uh, Kraut and I have MPU written. Don't worry. Well, I, I mean, I think this whole discussion is kind of missing the main point. I mean, Vosh started off by saying, oh, foreign aid, good. It can be good. And it's like, well, yeah, every we've always done foreign aid. People always forget the, the entire reason we even have a federal government is to handle military foreign policy. But, of course, nobody addressed aircraft Sparky's perfectly reasonable point, more perfect unions, perfectly reasonable point. And so you're just glossing over these 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 points where it's like, oh, yeah, foreign aid, good. But it's like h h we're broke for one. We don't have any money. Number two, everybody sort of agrees with that. And and uh, the Australian guy, Anna Markey, was perfectly correct to say it's a drop in the bucket. We spent $100 billion on Ukraine. We spend over $6 trillion on a, on a federal budget. So it is a drop in the bucket. But you've got a problem here where we're broke. Uh, there's inflation out of control. We don't have our own border secure. So you can say that foreign aid is good. And and I support foreign aid when it can be afforded, when we can pay for it, when it when it when it benefits United States national security, when foreign aid can be used to establish mm -hmm. and, and prolong American military dominance, economic dominance, cultural dominance. So foreign aid can absolutely be good. But you're simply not going to get it. Uh, with a with a GOP Congress, which we have right now, if you guys don't address the border and you left this, oh yeah, great, yeah, more foreign aid, more foreign aid, and let's just leave the border open and let's not do anything to try to balance the budget. That's a loser argument. How is the U.S. broke? Can you enlighten us, um, please? Yeah, we're thirty-four trillion dollars in debt and we're running two trillion dollar deficits every year, and Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are going bankrupt in eight years. If you didn't know, I just wanted well, to comment on the idea that we should let the markets decide which country deserves military aid and which one doesn't. There was a time in which that was actually legal and permitted before the First World War. Corporations, companies, you name it, could go out there into a conflict zone and decide, hey, we want to support this certain party in a war because we want that party to win. There's a very famous example of this. The British textile and cotton weaving industry bought a warship for the Confederacy, wanted the Confederacy to win the Civil War because slavery was very profitable for their industry and they wanted to keep the profits of that. Another example is not so famous. Yeah, and the French helped um, us in the revolution. Like, what the yeah, fuck is your a, point? A group, well, the French were a government and not a corporation. A group of Wall Street bankers gave huge war loans to the Japanese in the Japanese-Russian War because they wanted Korean railroads um, concessions. 
when you led a massive corporation, corporation like, you ever read war as hell by smedley butler when you led when you let markets you have decide, to calm down a bit all right I just when let, you let markets, lift the wine a bit dude Holy the shit. decision to support a country a conflict part of the war is not like a market things. decision it is a political decision it is a decision based on values a decision based on ideas on ideals on what you believe in if you let the market decide which side in the war deserves support they will pick the side where they can get money out of who's to say that the corporation would not support russia in return for like oil drilling and mining concessions in siberia also wait like, isn't isn't russia supposed to be like the nightmare of fucking ancaps like russia basically t like stole hundreds of jets when the sanctions hit like they just like appropriated them they appropriated western property like and they russia they, yeah, like, sure, sure. And, and I love so, how you guys. And, and you're now, you guys and you're just, now knocking them. You're you're now, it sounds wait, like you dislike it. Wait, 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 wait. We only have pressure. we have only have so many few uh, so much time left in this round. So I want to make sure that uh, Adam something gets to finish his statement, and then we get to get anybody that has anything left they want to quickly get out. So. I oh, sure. brush so, my so, teeth. All right, so so that. Fabian, so Fabian has this that nice uh, plague behind him, saying property is liberty. Well, then Russia has violated the number one golden rule of, of ANCAPism, I guess. Property, they stole Western property. They they just appropriate everything. So now yeah, I don't like uh, Russia. Yeah, sure. yeah, good, good. So now, so therefore, you should be <laughs> in support of sending Ukraine aid because then we're you're so we retarded. Are, no, it, it, it's not started really. I mean, if you think that's started, I mean, the, prob the problem is in your device, dude. Uh, also, uh, one, 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 one thing, not one liking thing, Russia doesn't thing, mean I have to support stealing money from the American it's, people. It's good. That's, that's, fund that's, 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 what I, that's what I want to. That's what I want to bring up. One one point that I want to address: the unaccountable weapon transfers and corruption. Like guys, like every every piece of equipment that gets sent to Ukraine is documented really, really uh, solidly. And we know where those are. Like, it's not just like you're sending stuff into Ukraine, it disappears. It not, doesn't work like, like that, actually. You know, I want, I want to add. Oh, oh, okay, quickly, I, I thought I'd be like, interrupting after, the other guy, not you. Goes, I want to make sure, um, I, I want to make sure after Vosh goes, we go MPU and Sparky because they've been waiting for a little I bit. Just, Ilan, can I, can I, I go quickly? I just want to say really, really quickly okay, with respect okay. to like, <laughs> okay, okay, it's, yes, it's a tough job, Dylan. Continue. Yeah, sorry, I was telling the crowd you can go brush his teeth. Continue. Um, right. The yeah, hall monitor pass. Um, yeah. With regards to the uh, like the previous topic, it's worth noting that the crisis we're currently having at our southern border is in large part a product of instability that we've either ignored or facilitated in Latin America. Our drug policies oh. and the policies that we've had since le lessening it have contributed to the rise and strength of the cartels, the instability oh. in Latin America, a large part of foreign intervention, or at the very least, complacency on our part. Likewise, the refugee crisis in Syria, direct product of our meddling, everything that happened with Assad and his government, his predecessor, we had a lot to do with that. Now, that's not to say that we yes, deserve so any... Oh, hold, your, hold your horses. No, you're, you're, learning the, you're learning the wrong lesson. The correct lesson that wise people take from this is that the affairs of other countries and their well-being reflect on our well-being. We're not an island. So if countries near us are prosperous and wealthy, we don't worry about refugees from Canada, do we? So what we should be concerned with is global stability. If we really are that great, and I... As a lover of America, I think we are, then we should try to see the world <laughs> through, make it a better place than it was when we were founded. Try to ensure for our sake, as well as theirs, that when changes are made, they're for everyone's betterment. Because if other things go poorly, if, 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 if other countries fall apart, we do pay a price for that, both in the stability of our markets, the stability of our borders. We need to be concerned with their well-being at least for selfish reasons. Now, humanitarian reasons, I think, are also pretty valid there. But if you're only concerned with the selfish ones, that's something that you should take in consideration. Global stability, good. We agree. Global stability is good. We can mm -hmm. agree on that. MPU, I believe you've been waiting for quite a while. Yeah, so um, I think Vosh would like to, you know, give the world a Coke and teach us all how to sing. I don't um, like Coke. I well. The, um, the, look, the problem, the problem with the southern border is that we have laws on the books that, that regulate immigration. Those laws are being violated by non-government agencies who bring people across the border. They coach them on how to say that they have a credible fear uh, uh, or, or threat. They're economic migrants, and they're not, they're not asylees, right? They're not asylum seekers. They're not valid asylum claims. 98% plus of the people who come across the border, the southern border um, who are from Latin American countries are not valid asylum seekers.
And then on top of that, we have hundreds, if not thousands of people have come across the border who are who are known. uh, uh, They're known to be affiliated with terror organizations. We have um, tens of thousands, tens of. I don't know. I think there was a Hamas uh, person who tried to get uh, who tried to come through the, the northern border just like the last few uh, few days. Got to lock that one down. Okay. There's um, the Chinese. The, there are Chinese. There are single Chinese men of military age. Okay, who are coming through the southern border? You basically just have to get. You just have to get to Mexico, and then you basically can get into the United States for free, right? And then there's a, uh, they're not even doing DNA Where testing. Where are you getting these problems. figures from? What? What does this Where have are you getting these figures from? Like 98% are, 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 are economic migrants and not asylum. Like, where are you getting the, that, those figures? Did you get it from, figures? did you get it from Facebook or something? No, 98% of the people um, who are, who, who go through asylum, this is what the federal government puts out, Okay. Um, okay, yeah, but are, are they either? Is there either such a okay, giant so crisis I'm, I'm that gonna they have can't to put be a pin on this at all? I gotta put or, a pin on. I gotta put a pin on this exactly because the, percentage? the time the time has ran out, and we do have a bunch of people waiting. Obviously, we're going through a bunch of people today, so I do need to do the two kicks, and I have gotten who is being uh, kicked this round. Uh, uh, so right, I'm I'll gonna throw up. it out, throw it, <laughs> I'll throw it out there, and I'm very sorry, Anamarky. This round, the judges have decided that you have been eliminated, probably because of, of your Australianness. They are slightly bigoted. I am very sorry. Uh, I hope to see you next time. You have a good one, okay, man? Fair enough. Okay, bye bye, bye bye. I love you. We're gonna play Hell at Loose later. Bye. Be well. Okay. Uh, and, and the other one is Sparky. I'm very sorry, Sparky. You you were thrown over the top rope. So so Sparky made the best awesome. point. Spar- Sparky, you made the best point of anybody on this on this. T- topic by the way and i got to talk the least that's okay thank you for having me have a good night good. okay you have I'm a good one man open <laughs> yeah he did have the balls to open and i do respect that i, I do want to throw that out there, there. no that was yeah. that was good that's respectable by the way I, that apparently the judge told me it wasn't an easy decision they liked everybody okay so, uh we're bringing in two more people uh it is going to be chud logic and alex stein if any of you are familiar with Alex Stein from his AOC antics or his new show that he has. Um, uh, by the way, if anybody wants to get the mid portion questions, you donate now. Large donations will be coming up after the next break. We'll be asking the uh, hosts, the, uh, the not the host, the guests today, those questions submitted by the viewers. Uh, now we're going to continue where we left off. Uh, who wants to pick us back up? Oh, same topic. Yeah, same topic, but quickly, I okay. have logic. I guess. Okay, let me cut to, to the chase. Okay, it's all boring foreign policy shit. Okay, Dylan, <laughs> right? Very rich that you've come up with this topic, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, then allegedly you went mm-hmm. to Ukraine on the Ukrainian dime to run for a Ukrainian pussy. Answer that to that. True. It was pussy, <laughs> actually. How many whores ah, have you run through? Progressive. Um, I lost count, of course. Okay. Yeah. Dylan's been running through those war widows like a goddamn racer. Um, you, yeah, exactly. The, uh, oh, sorry, your house got blown up. Come around my place and you can stay here for a little bit. Don't worry about it. Thank, thank okay. you, Chad Logic, for coming. And thank you, Alex Stein, for coming on today. Um, so, who wants to actually pick us back up? No, I mean, I think that's a fair point that foreign aid, foreign aid has only become a controversial topic because conservatives have pointed out how hypocritical and preposterous it is to spend hundreds of billions on other countries when we have a wide open border. That's the only reason this is controversial. The United States has utilized foreign aid for our benefit to do what's best for America, to serve our interests, to promote mm-hmm. American value. We've done that for decades, for centuries. It's been fine. The only reason it's a controversy now is because the Democrats and Joe Biden and all these leftist organizations have a wide open border and uh, more perfect union is 100 percent right. These are all fraudulent asylum claims of the systems being abused. Uh, these NGOs are training these people how to file fraudulent claims. Bro- uh, Joe Biden's administration, the Democrats, literally just gave one of these fraudulent asylum claimants a court date in 2030, and they're not going to show up. And when they do show up, 98% of them get denied, and then they're here and they've got babies and everything else. That's the only reason this topic's even a, a controversial topic right now. Hey, I've got okay. a, a quick question, okay. by the way, lecture. No, sincere question. Um, Lecture, if it was possible, so we spend a lot of money protecting our southern border as it is, if it was possible to spend that amount of more, uh, that amount of money investing in a variety of Latin American countries, Mexico, Colombia, whatever else, and 
in the long term, say in five to 10 years, the money that we invest in foreign aid, that we give them in foreign aid, could contribute to the betterment of conditions in those countries to the point where they don't really have that many migrant trains coming up on North, you know? We could uh, make them want to live in their countries. If that could be done, would you prefer that? Do you think that'd be a good run forward? Sure. I just don't think that that, that can be done. I, I, that's been tried. We've been trying to help those countries. And it's not just the Latin American countries that are in these. We're, we have people from over 120 different countries crossing our border just this year alone. <laughs> no, we're so if that was possible, if, if, if we could do that and we'd get a wonderful, wonderful result, then of, who wouldn't support it? It's a wonderful result. There's no more illegal. I won't. I just, I just have to throw I, in. I, I won't. It's, it's really, uh, really weird that like you guys, that like you're just two different socialists that want to spend the American dollar on different things. How about we just end the drug war and then the cartels and so much of the crime that is that is that that's is a, in many of these South American well, countries. Well, hold on, I want to end the drug war. Wait, 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 dollar you can just stop violating people's rights and you'll save money and stabilize south america like can we just can we just okay. so we're getting, without we're spending getting anybody's little, money we, we're starting to go a little bit off topic but yeah. i am interested to, to see lecture fan respond to that just because i'm interested to see the it's two just, conservatives go at it over yeah. the drug war or well, conservative Fabian, asking Fabian, on that side. You know, Fabian saying that I support a bunch of government spending. It's like, no, I believe in across the board, massive, massive spending cuts at the federal level, massive spending cuts to where we're running a, a surplus. You're and you're saying, oh, you you support you support the United States government doing the number one thing it's supposed to do, which is military and foreign policy. Oh, you're a socialist. How stupid. OK, so I got to I got to throw not, this over to the, the, the people waiting. Yeah, so first yes, I want to throw support, it over to you support a portion I of gotta, the market. Being stop. Captured shh, by the state. Shh. Please. Socialist. Sorry, I just gotta. I gotta make sure we have enough time for everybody. Kraut, uh, you've been waiting a bit. I also have Adam, MPU, and Alex. I put you on the list because you just haven't said anything yet. Okay. Uh, Britain is currently going through a cost of living crisis, the worst since the 1970s, as well as a migration crisis as well. Poland went through a constitutional crisis in the last few years. Italy is going through a migration crisis. Lots of crises politically across Europe. Cost of living crisis mainly. Lots of issues to deal with. Yet still, despite these crises, we've all somehow found the political will to also provide military aid to Ukraine. When figures on the American far right say that they want to condition military aid to Ukraine upon something, something border, it just doesn't come across as sincere. It comes across like an excuse, as if they're just deliberately attaching something completely non-related to an issue. I, it sounds like an excuse. There's no, there's yeah. no American far right oh. representative. Please stop. I'm not. Well, talking if, about if, okay. Are we talking about the border? So we're talking about the border crisis. Uh, we were talking about uh, how Ukraine is tied to. The I, border I also crisis. don't see. I also don't see together. how they're the same. Uh, is there like a, a Mexican army invading Texas, annexing people? In no, Dallas. guys. Listen, I live in North? Dallas. No, I live in Dallas, and, and what's going on is a lot of sex trafficking. I see a lot of children that are actually, their parents are paying money to the cartel so they can come over right. here. So this is this is a business. This is not like, oh, just fuddy-duddy, I'm a refuge, my country stinks. As a matter of fact, you can even go look up the trucks that are full of the, a lot of these people, because they come across the border with nothing, but they pay other coyotes to actually carry some of their belongings across the border. So this right. is a planned invasion by the cartel, the most powerful mafia group in the world. Here to destabilize America because look, Japan doesn't have this problem. North Korea doesn't have this Japan's problem. Japan's doing great they... right now. That's true. <laughs> Model of economic and social success. Yeah, if they let more immigrants in, they might have actually had a chance. Who is really behind this trafficking? Who's really behind the coyotes? We need the Japanese. They're trying to. They're they're angry. Wait, 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 that was the first one I muted. It was Chud. I'll start muting everyone else. Oh. I chose Chud first because I know he can take it. Okay. Alex, uh, I want to let you finish your point, and then we have people on a list to go to. I want to make sure we get to Adam and MPU, but uh, Alex, I want to make sure you get to finish your point uninterrupted. uninterrupted. 
Well, and just to Vosh real quick, I would just say that the culture in Japan and the safety and a country like uh, South Korea or North Korea, I believe, safe if you're not getting killed by a dictator. I'm just saying there's other countries that don't just allow every Nigerian uh, ex-rapist into their country. And if you think that's a joke, there are literally people here that have been convicted of rape that are coming across here that don't have to go through any sort of paperwork. Yet if I wanted to leave, I have to have my passport. I, have to, I just went out of the country to Mexico. I had to spend four hours in customs nearly. So I'm just saying, why do I have to do all that? They don't have to be vaccinated you know they're just held to a, a different standard than an american citizen so what's happening is a, a foreign invasion uh, wait you I got vaccinated right can, I, can i ask you alex no, quickly I didn't, oh, then I'm you don't saying. have to what do you well then what are let you me, complaining about wait let me throw people, you're saying nobody lost their job or nobody couldn't travel without wait, you a vaccine. just said they don't have to be vaccinated like you were whining you had to and it turns out you haven't so like what's the issue be, you're like a mexican immigrant in terms of your uh fauci ouchie well, sh- now we're arguing semantics i'm just saying at one point you know that it was, it was an obligation now we're arguing be epidemiology actually it's calling you a hypocrite okay, before well, we can we let wait can we not go they don't have to have a passport why do i have to have a passport let's 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 be clear that the topic is let's bring it back over to this being uh, tied to Ukraine. I wanted to throw this back to the people on the list. I want to throw it over to Adam. What do you think about the idea of these? Also, was Israel, you know. Yeah, well, that was also. You can forced it to Ukraine. Can we get into Israel? Can we get into Israel, please? You can tie it to Israel. I've got really important questions to ask. This is important. This is important. This is important. This is important. Okay, so listen, listen. So I'd like to mute him again because it's fun. Adam, something. What the fuck? You're on the list. You've been waiting. I wanted to make sure you got a chance to speak. And then we're going to. We should move over to Israel and Gaza and talk about that a little bit. But of course, I made it Ukraine because I can. Adam? All right, sure. Thank you. So, Alex, first off, hey, how is how is Russia doing in NATO? You know, I've heard you. <laughs> Did you have to well, learn? They wanted to join a long time ago. And first oh, sure. of all, let me tell you something. I'm the no, smartest no, 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 no. pimp on this turn, panel. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm the smartest pimp on this no, 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 no. panel. So yeah, yes, course, so, yes, yeah, yes yeah, I misspoke before. <laughs> I have misspoke yeah, yeah, well, before, but I'm still the biggest pimp here. I yes, I am the biggest. Do you also sex traffic? I am. Yeah, I'm a pimp on a blimp. I got these clothes on deck. When, yes. he, when, when he said he saw all the trafficking in Dallas, like he was seeing it from like a first person, like he was actually doing it. <laughs> as a customer, Al- 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 and Andrew so, Ray working see? together to beat the cartel. Yeah. All right. Dude, so, okay, so, so first of all, just, 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 just We only have so much time. So, Adam, uh, now right, that so, you're done dunking on him. Okay, so, ju- so just, to, just to quickly address some points. So Japan is not a good example in terms of immigration or Korea. Both the, both of those countries are dying as we speak, uh, right? So let's not bring it up. Also, oh my also, God, I, but I'll give well, it let him wait, let him finish. Finish. So anyway, and like I, I noticed that like our sort of opponents, like people on the right here, like uh, their arguments are basically just variations of distilled boomer Facebook posts. So that's that's a bit disappointing. Otherwise, uh, in terms of the immigration and the and the uh, southern southern border, and in terms of America, like as a European, I I just want to share like a few quick few lines of a banger song I've heard recently. It's, it goes, "Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched re- refuse of your teeming shore. Send these homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift fly my lamp beside the golden door." I think it's a great song, but like. Uh, I, I I don't know I don't Never know why took that Frenchie statue. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So like, I, and so like I so this is the big contradiction for me from my perspective because like America is all about land of the free, a goal there you can make it. Meanwhile, conservatives are hell bent on turning uh, Amer- America into this like little cool, walled garden sort of uh, white majority no, sort of. No, yeah. so, uh, now we don't have wait wait wait. wait. I want to make sure this goes to MPU because he wants to talk and he's been on the list for a while. And then I want right. to throw it over to Chud because Chud has started a protest movement in my chat. About being muted, so I want to make sure he gets recognized as an oppressed person. So free MPO. Chud, hashtag free Chud. Yeah, how, how have I not been muted? But Chud has twice. Like that's just not fair. So yeah, to to kind of get to um your point, America has probably the most generous immigration policy of any country on the world. If you step across the border without permission in Mexico, they lock you up. Okay, there's just that's it. You get locked up. OK, we have a, a, a over a million people entered this country through a legal process. And we have uh, under the Biden administration close to eight million thus far illegals that have crossed, many of whom are um, are convicted felons. They've been they've been deported once, twice, three or more times. 
Okay, and they're still coming across. And the and the president or the current administration has done nothing to quell that tide. They just simply make it easier. They they made an app making it easier for people to come in, and then they just simply change the terminology around so these people can have quote unquote legal status while they're waiting for up to ten years, as Lecture Fan put out uh, a few minutes ago. We um the cartels. This is not about. The war on drugs, Fabian, with all due respect, I, I get where you come from uh, as a libertarian, that there's no real federal rule or federal control for gun uh, for drug policy uh, or they shouldn't. That's your that's your take. Right. But the problem is, is that the cartels are making as much or no, more univariate analysis. I'm not I'm not a boomer con. I don't care. OK, the point is, is that's that cool. the, the cartels are making uh, as much or more money trafficking in human bodies. OK, than they do in, in drug sales. Right. So uh, let's 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 just put it out there. We don't if we build up um, South America, no, it's not going to keep do you, the do you deny. Do you deny the that because that the, the problem would be low. lessened? Do you deny that the problem would be lessened if we stop the war on drugs? Yes or no? I, no, I don't think it will. Okay. So, so, so before you, we, before believe, we, wait, wait, you, before you we devolve that the into the war on drugs, will make the exact same amount of money. I, I, I just wanted to say, well, the cartel make more. Everything well, the cartel more before, before, before we, before, before we delve right. into the war on drugs, the cartels. Uh, before, have wait, wait. I'm, I'm asking you both to wait. We're delving into a totally separate topic now, uh, and I want to make sure we pull it back a little bit. And Shud has been waiting. He says he's oppressed. I want to give him a platform as a progressive. I, I give oppressed people platforms. Chud, what do you have to say? Yes. Well, I tried to make it about Ukraine, but Dylan wasn't interested in exploring it. I thought you said it. Israel. Um, I invite you to make your conclusions about that. When I asked you about what was going on in Ukraine, but that doesn't matter. The only thing I wanted to say, maybe this can kick off the Israel conversation. Why is it that America needs to give money to Israel? Because surely the Jews, sorry, the Zionists, the Zionists are you know, more on top of that already, surely. Oh, that's an easy question because because Israel's well, the most just... legitimate most legitimate uh, country in the Middle East. Well, we should the get the cartels democracy. to give them the They're money. They're our best they ally. The They've been the most wonderful ally. They help us fight terrorism. They're the they're the indigenous people of that land, subject to horrible, horrible, radical Islamic extremism. You've got Americans that were captured by H Hamas. Uh, Israel Israel's our best ally. They're one of the greatest countries on earth. Full support for Israel. How the f do you maintain we shouldn't be giving money to Ukraine, but you, but, did but, say, but then you, you lecture fans in favor of aid to Ukraine as well. The, okay. Okay. So, in, so you're I'm just in favor of balancing. Okay. All right. All right I'm fair in enough, favor fair of balance. I'm in favor of balancing the budget. And then once you yeah, balance, no, no, no. balance that's, the that's budget, you, then you can send it to Ukraine. Okay. But, but you don't need to do that first to send money to Israel, like Israel yeah, special no. or something. I, I do think Israel's different from Ukraine, and I'm so proud of the Republicans and co conservative movement. The conservative movement has come out strong in support of Israel, despite the despite the non-support for Ukraine. And I think there is a difference between Israel and Ukraine, and I'm so happy to see the Republicans and the conservatives. It really makes you wonder if the uh, deferring to immigration thing was uh, was was actually not an issue, and it's just a way of avoiding the actual topic, you know? Um, For obviously, that's yeah, the reality. It's, it's, the reality it's, it's always, if, it's, if always a, it's always, it's always a proxy Congress, issue. It's like when they say, like, wait, oh, wait, well, can we need we, to. Can I, can I ask that around the room? Do people think that the tying of immigration to the foreign aid bill is about solving immigration, or is it about killing the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, Israel, killing the Ukraine bill. aid bill? Killing, no. killing, yeah, killing, 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 killing the bill. It's yeah. about, it's yeah. about neither. It's about Kill fucking bill. politicians and dumb conservatives that follow their coattails on twitter instead of actually thinking for a goddamn moment and politicians just want something to browbeat and beat their chest about it's like, like the idea that like the idea that these two things are the same in this giant complex budget is ludicrous it's just it's a way to get to to go why are we spending money over there when we should be spending money at home and it's like or we could just stop spending money on shit that makes the problem worse but there's I have no actually a nice a neat theory about this by the way uh, i've actually a nice neatly packaged theory uh, see uh, let, let's see what you think so uh, the gop uh, seems to support aid to israel uh, unconditionally basically and they seem to yep. drag their feet yep. on ukraine right they're tying it to the border stuff so 
since the GOP has been getting more and more far right, you know, so on one hand we have Israel, which is uh, working on, which is led by a far right government, uh, may, aiming to ethnically cleanse the Gaza Strip and create an ethno state, uh, and inside Israel, as it's as it's, as it's been happening on the West Bank, for example. And on the other hand, we have Ukraine, a liberal democracy fighting against a similarly far right. Uh, invasion force, a traditional sort of very uh, far right, traditional conservative, conservative, etc., Christian fascist almost uh, government, uh, Russia, right? And the GOP is not really in favor of supporting the U Ukrainians against that, right? So I, I see a kind of strange pattern here that like fascist invasion done by uh, like against the liberal democracy, we do not support liberal democracy, and then b invasion and ethnic cleansing by a. But wait, Lexi Van doesn't want to support Russia. Lexi Van doesn't want to give money to Russia. That would be the equivalent, surely. Can you define far right? You use far right Sorry? four it's times. It's when a person is bad. Right, well, yes, yes, there's right, multiple right, people. So wait, 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 wait. Multiple course, people have asked some question. Can can we have one? So first, can I, can the I judge quickly question? respond to the? Oh, sorry. Do you want to do that question instead? Okay. No, no, yeah, just, just like just, the, the just, random just, journalism just, slur. Like, what the f? Just, just, right? just, just, yeah, just a quick response. Yes, so far right would be Russia, for example, a, a hyper nationalist, sort of a very traditional uh, Christian. What's an example. Uh, Can you give a definition? Uh, far right, sure. So the far right is a sort of a also on the uh, is characterized. I can give you characteristics. So it's characterized by sort of hyper nationalism, sort of a, a very sort of hyper masculinized uh, culture and state ethos. It's sort of looking back to a to a greater to a great future and sort of eulogizing a great future and generally thinking that the degeneracy from certain sources, certain ethnic groups or is that Alex Stein? Is ruining. Is ruining. Is ruining. Are you saying Alex Stein is far right? Are you saying Alex Stein is far right? Oh, I, I mean, the only one here. He's, 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 he's a meaningless definition. I mean, Alex Stein is a, a, is a humble patriot, from what I've heard. Yeah. One hundred percent. He supports, all, he supports cartel business. He can't be an American chauvinist. Oh, yeah. Exactly right, because I have to uh, I have to tip the strippers. I mean, and that's one thing that everybody needs to realize. Idolizing a politician is like thinking the stripper actually likes you. None of these politicians like us. They don't care about us. They're never going to solve our problems, especially Relax. Vladimir Zelensky. But or Joe Biden or even, believe it or not, you know, Donald Trump is not perfect, even though I love the man. And he you know, likes to grab him by the you know what, just like I do when I'm at the strip club with the sex trafficking victims. But my point is, I really don't like aid to either of them. I mean, I want to help out Israel, of course, but then also Israel kills three of their own hostages that are waving white flags that makes me kind of feel like maybe we should be shooting less guns at each other and maybe less innocent people will get <laughs> shot so you know i mean i'm just i know that sounds crazy but i'm very yes, anti-war no, yes. wait 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 wait, 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 wait. You know? do you want a peace agreement Oh, of so course and i think that's what everybody we, wants we, but we, i don't understand want, why well, but this is the problem is it going to be a two states how is it going to be a two peace? states wait, i can't hear well, this question. is what they what, say Kraut, let me hear Kraut. what's your question with who do you want to make peace because all the well, people. Well, this is what they, say. They, they would say that it would be a two-state solution, but two I don't know if How that's do you make even peace possible. In Ukraine? How do you make peace in Ukraine? A another two-state solution. I mean, you guys have the Donbass region, yeah, and, yeah, and you have they, Russia. They, they and Ukraine. Just, you know what they the should have just agree with Vladimir Zelensky. I mean, with no, uh, no. at the beginning. Do you know what the Russian position is. They the won the Donbass region, no, yeah. They still insist to this day. To this day, they still insist on all of Ukraine. They well, have let them have it. Who gives a damn? Why you fake it? No, 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 no. This is this is what well garbage. Okay, Let listen. Russia's it. Russia's borders were assigned at birth in 1993. They signed a treatise. You will you will never have the Donbass. Like this idea that Russia can just change its borders, like uh, like what uh, based on what you know, like uh, like a woke doctor. No, ridiculous. There are two states, Ukraine and Russia. They have tightly defined, biologically ordained borders. And what Russia has been doing lately is a ridiculous postmodern attempt at subverting the traditional Ukraine Russia border with this I don't know this 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 what like cry bullying ridiculous no I I fully support whatever aid is necessary to return Ukraine and Russia to their biologically ordained status well, to if a nine -year -old, let me say this let me say this if a you nine year old can necessary. biologically if a nine-year-old can biologically change her sex, then I think Russia can biologically change her so, borders. So, so I mean, when supporting Lockheed Martin, so how, do, how, how does the country get Inquisition against to, the nine-year-old. How do you get to decide which country does get to exist and which one doesn't? Where well, it's simple. You, you played a video decide? game. Have you ever played a video game before? Or a board so you game? want to live in a world of like whoever has more world. resources, and right. more guns usually oh, wins. You really want to. Yeah, you really want to enter a dog eat dog world. Um, we're already in it. We're already in it. We're, we're in it, bud. Dark. He's already in it for Dallas. Many years and and sit in. We're only in it if we allow it to happen. Trust me, we're you've been eaten by the dog already. You already got those cat ears. You've already been eaten. You know it's dog eat dog. I mean, that's just that's how it already is. 
So you, want yeah, to, yeah. so you want to we all need to run away to the beach at this point. Have, all of the agreements, everything else, is just let everyone do whatever the f*** they want. Just invade, conflict, and everything. Well, isn't that no, what because you know, know how much frozen conflict is. I don't want them yeah. to fight. I'm just saying, you know, it, it's it's a futile fight in the Ukraine, and we're just giving them money. They need futile? to come to an agreement. Why is it futile? Because they're not going to beat Russia in a war. It's going to be like Vietnam or the Why war in Iraq. That, but Vietnam how is it won. going to be Vietnam? Wait, 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 Russia wait, 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 can we pause? Wait, pause for a second. I just wanted to... I, I'm curious for my own. Who's Vietnam in the Vietnam analogy? Well, I guess you'd say Russia's America in the Vietnam analogy, but you know they would just would they be Vietnam it. in the Vietnam analogy or <laughs> Vietnam won? Well, you can you show me I on know. a map where Vietnam is? What I'm sitting there, probably not. Honestly, I mean, I mean, what do I look like? A, a, you probably couldn't either, dude. I'm telling you, you, you get a map of fifty states. It takes you a couple well, tries. Well, you can, to you can tell because famously, America Tirola. annexed the Donbass portion of Vietnam back in '73. <laughs> I'm just saying, regardless, guys, a modern day <laughs> war doesn't have winners and losers. I mean, I guess you could say the Taliban beat America, but I guess that's just it has losers. Just stay there. It's it's well, the people just that die. And fight forever, but it's just you know it seems That's so true, Fabian. As America, people dying Russia in war is bad. I can agree. War. It's right. It's the people that keep dying. It's the, it's the Russian movie. soldiers that get conscripted to go die in Ukraine, and it's the Ukrainians yeah. that are dying as we continuously fund it because you know we have some ego about this vague notion of stability, as if America is this paragon of. Stability. Is that is it vague? Vague? Keep fighting. The Iranians the the fucking wait, 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 I can't hear anything. I can't, nobody can fucking hear Okay, wait. If you all talk at the same time, I can't hear anything. I know Vosh wanted to talk. Sir, I know Kraut wanted to talk. In? So can I get uh, in? and lecture? I'll write your name down. Okay. No, I just I just want to say it's it's always weird to me how what start out as like measured conversations on budgetary allowances for supporting Ukraine turn into stuff like this nebulous notion of peace. It, everything degrades into talking like an anime villain. Like, yeah, I think if you asked your average Ukrainian whether or not they're more stable today or four years ago, they could give you a pretty clear answer. I think that global stability is actually a pretty understandable context or like concept. America, we are the global market. America benefits massively from the world running like a well-oiled clock. Uh, you know, as much as some corporations in America benefit from war, and to be sure, they do, I'm not suggesting otherwise, for the most part, we benefit from the world being stable. So does Russia, by the way. It's not like the average Russian citizen is doing fantastically right now. Ideally, they would eventually, you know, upgrade to a liberal democracy or God willing, a socialist one. But, you know, that's one step at a time. But in order for us to, like, facilitate that process, we have to get our hands dirty with making difficult decisions when it comes to what we do or don't want to support. The idea of like fully abdicating ourselves from global responsibility, it's a child's fantasy. It's like a kid not wanting to get involved in schoolyard drama. We can't help it. And we're the biggest country in the world in terms of power. There's no escaping the responsibility that comes with that. Again, you set up these false dichotomies of like where where the idea that we shouldn't be continuously funding a proxy war means that America is this like 1910s isolationist country nation before the progressive era, right? Like it, it it's very simple to say like you don't have to advocate one extreme over the other. You can very easily say America should be doing everything it can to try and strong arm Ukraine and Russia into peace agreements. And you could be saying the exact same thing about Israel and Hamas or any other conflict in which for whatever reason we're funding multiple different sides and we're bleeding money that we shouldn't be spending and yeah you say well we're all well, about we're not stability. really spending well, money all on about ukraine. stability the, then we should the be ukraine using, boy, it's not we should be using war. that power the to ukraine, bring peace to get war, stability we are the the trying to a new concept that you get to have hey, when I'm it benefits you and then you get to throw away when it isn't Okay. Ukraine, Ukraine war is not a Crow. proxy war. Yes. The Ukraine war is not a proxy war. The Ukrainians are going to continue fighting even if you cut aid. It would be nice if you gave aid. It would be the right thing to do. But if you cut it, the Ukrainians will keep fighting. And the Europeans will keep shipping their aid to Ukraine. It is not a proxy war. I don't know why that always has to be fish. Like, sorry, I can't hear Europe. the end of... I couldn't hear the end of crowd sentence. Could you say that one more time? I don't wait. Sorry, I don't know why this idea always has to be brought in that it is a proxy war. That somehow Russia is in some way benevolent here. That somehow misunderstood or something. What? No, Russia is no. not being misunderstood. No, nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying Russia's benevolent. 
Well, okay. it's not a proxy uh, war. It seems like these positions always kind of come adjacent. Because again, it's like you could say this isn't our business or whatever, but then a bunch of other stuff slips out, like vague notion of stability or proxy war. It's look, us funding an ally is not crazy. That's not some like wild new overextension of state power. Nations have been doing this since before the nation state yeah. even existed. The idea of our ally is under attack, we should help them, goes back as far as organized human civilization. I mean, this is pretty language so it, it's it, not just about alliance it's not just about alliance in the last 20 years russia has started nine wars or been involved right, in right, nine right. wars all of them of aggression well, all of them like in sure, russia is a naughty boy transnistria bombing nobody Syria, here likes russia Etnia, etc they have been very aggressive and their goal is very clearly outlined they want to turn europe into a bunch of poker chips to okay. be divided up into spheres of influence so Fabian, okay, so, 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 i'm just... sorry we gotta pause this we don't have much time left so i want to make sure the people have been waiting get to talk i know mpu has been waiting i've seen him trying to get in a few times so i want to make sure mpu gets to talk and lecture fan i put him on the list so i gotta give him time to talk i stick by my commitments and then we'll kick some people out Okay, so um, it is, the situation in Ukraine is a proxy war. The situation in Israel is a proxy war, um, because when we send our when we send our munitions or we send money over there, okay, to achieve an objective, we're letting them do the thing, but we're paying for the thing, okay. Um, <clears throat> and the problem isn't so much the problem isn't so much that we are sending military hardware. We're actually paying Ukrainian pensions. This is money that the Congress is, uh, or not the Congress, well, actually, the Congress and administration have sent to Ukraine to actually pay for pensions of government employees and military personnel. So it's not just like there's this clean, pure audit trail. Everybody knows this piece of equipment came in, this piece of equipment was expended. There is a lot of corruption in what's going on in Ukraine. And the people that are saying put a pause on it or put more restricted, uh, restriction in control, they just want to understand where everything is going and that it is reasonably accounted for. You can't account for everything. It's not That's not going to happen, right? You're not going to have a, a complete and total accounting. Who, who, who is we don't have any Bills, who is paying the, the bills for, for the Ukrainian? The no, who's paying the bills for, for for Ukrainian state employees right now? The, the Ukrainian Dutch. government. Yeah, the, the Dutch. Ukrainian government. The Dutch. The Dutch. The Dutch, well, the Dutch government yeah, opened the Dutch its budget are, to the Ukrainian the government. Yes, sure, sure. So yeah. most, yeah. most, the Dutch, the Dutch are most literally expensive. paying right now for yeah. all the state employees. When we Ukrainian send billions state. of dollars, when we send billions of dollars of hardware, material, or money over there, yes, okay, hardware, it's the American tax in hardware rate. mostly, in hardware mostly. But so most, most of the oh, money most transfers money. are done by the uh, done, done from, coming from the EU. So the functioning of the Ukrainian state is held up by the EU, uh, the EU taxpayers who support this by. The way not the american taxpayers america mostly sends hardware which which is calculated as money but it's hardware uh, money is sent mostly by the eu right we're sending I have, out. I to say wait 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 no, well, I, I just I, want to I, say I, it is money because okay. the biggest industries in America are Raytheon, Halliburton is our military industrial complex. So we get to give them our Lecture old fan. equipment so we can. Yes. Yeah, so who, who runs well, those? Who runs those companies? Of, I'm, I'm asking. I think, a lot, of, I think a lot of what you see, a lot of what you see amongst the isolationists uh, on the panel is a result of Americans being wonderfully secure we've had total security we've had a great economy i love that that kraut started out this conversation by basically saying that trump was right that europe was never paying for their own defenses enough and now europe is having to ramp up trump was right more perfect union brings up a great point about the reason that ukraine is different from israel is because ukraine is corrupt and the Bidens themselves were involved in corruption in ah. Ukraine. And so that's why there's a whole bunch of questions about sending all of this money there. That's that's the big issue. I hear Zelensky is actually related to Biden. It's like a long, long con, you know, not a problem with Netanyahu. Um, OK, there's, so there's one thing, though, there's one thing that I really want to add. In here, well, that's is, funny. The Americans mostly send equipment They don't send money to send equipment. And the reason why so many of us in Europe really want the equipment from america to keep going and keep coming second hand equipment I, yeah and and this is i'm sad that like so none of the military YouTubers, sell, like those are assets I, what, like, I, like property that, like, has value laser pig or one of the military youtubers is not here one of the biggest surprises of this war is just how much superior american weapons are to russian weapons it's insane like 
Adam it probably takes... saw the videos them himself. Yeah, we've like, that. We've one that. single Bradley taking out an entire column of twelve Russian armored vehicles and tanks. Yeah, it's pretty it's insane. Crazy. Yeah. It's insane how much superior that equipment is. Yeah, and actually, and in, terms of selling, in, in terms of selling, though, Twitter might get in, really in, mad if you use. In terms of selling, though, like lo those things have been sitting in storage for like 20, yeah, 30 years with no they're buyers. Yes, but yeah, yeah, but 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 they're still very useful against Russian hardware, which is shit. So uh, if there were buyers for that, I mean, there aren't really any buyers, at least not trustworthy buyers. You, you don't want like geopolitical enemies or untrustworthy countries buying your stuff because then they then they'll know their weakness, etc. Right. So and. Um, What's being, being, what's being transferred to Ukraine has been sitting in storage for 20, 30 years. And one point I quickly want to bring up, uh, when Ukraine Very hits... Very quickly, because the, we, need to, yes. we need to keep people off. I already uh, got the people. Okay, 20, 20 seconds, all right? So when Ukraine hit that Russian forward helicopter base with the Atakams uh, missile, uh, then that, that missile was manufactured in 1996. It was just time to decommission that missile, which costs money, which, you know, you, you have to pay technicians, etc. And instead of decommissioning it, you just ship it to Ukraine, have fun, use it, good luck, and then a bunch of Russian hardware gets smashed. Right. Right. And, and then the U.S. turns around, right? And then the military industrial complex says, well, we have to replenish all of this hardware that we gave away. And then the taxpayers of the United States end up having to pay the bill down the road again. With It was going to be decommissioned anyway. It was going to be decommissioned in months. It's the okay, same thing. So I got a uh, we're going to be kicking people out. But first, I got a hundred dollar donation. For so they're, they get to ask a question because they donated money. And I'm a capitalist now, so I make the money. So this is a one hundred dollar question, and it's for and it, it seems to be for uh, lecture fan Alex Stein and NPU. Do you think that General Alden's plan would have been able to reduce loss of life and increase efficiency in the Ukraine Russia war? Not familiar with General Alden's plan, whatever the hell that is. Alex, no. NPU, <laughs> no. Okay. It's very detailed, but it's a very good plan. Low, well, low I guess we'll have plan. to do more research then. Well, thank you for $100. That was a great yeah. use of your money. You could have, I don't know, uh, saved like a few like very poor children in a third world country, but you did this instead. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyway, let's kick the people that are going to get kicked today. <laughs> uh, the people that are going to get kicked, and uh, this was... Oh, here's the list. <clears throat> I'm very sorry. Adam Kraut, Europeans kicked out of the conversation whoa I'm finally very sorry <laughs> kicked out thrown over the top rope i'm it very sorry you guys can go to bed now bye bye i love you both yeah. bye bye right, so well, two, good luck the next two uh, mm -hmm. uh that are uh kicked is do, 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 uh fabian and oh is this true ah, i can't believe it chud i'm very sorry oh. one round gutting <laughs> oh, four people are getting kicked it's a f right? massacre Oh no! Like, Why well, I had yeah, to say about the Jays clearly, but it's all good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye. everybody. It's an uneven round this time because we have some people made cancellations, so we're you know we have to we have to change the voting system. We have a very transparent system here when we choose who gets kicked and who doesn't get kicked based upon my interests. It's very, my interests yeah, it's alone. a very DNC style. Um, it's a very good yeah, behind it's a very the good scenes. System. Yeah. It's a very good system. It's like this we is like a, those We have a central committee that works with a board. That it's mail very and voting happened. It's very democratic. We all of our votes are digital, and I have them all on a hard drive that I keep around my uh, my neck. All of the votes are digital. You vote it's only by TikTok. Yeah, okay. The voting drops appeared at the last moment. You know, completely changed yeah. the yeah. Now we're gonna get into some serious topics. Now we just talked about a war, so we need to get into something actually serious. Okay, and that's the war on Christmas. Right? The war on oh. Christmas. It's I think been we resumed. have a different war, and it's the war on this topic. The war on Christmas Whoa. is intense, it's deadly, it's awful, and they're going after the good faith. So the question is for the room, is there actually a war on Christmas, or is it a blown out proportion just by like Fox News hosts and nonsense? There's <laughs> just a massive amount of religious bigotry on the left. Tons of religious bigotry and hatred on the left. True, I agree. Not, not, not enough, though. Oh, no. Okay. Um, so if I if I can, I like to say that you know what I do agree there is a war on Christmas, and I think it's based. All right. Um. I Ooh. I think I think we should um uh you know I think we should continue the war on Christmas. In fact, I think we should actually bring in like heavy artillery, um, shoot down any Christmas trees that we see. Um, we need to make this like a true secular utopia. 
Okay, the right, thing on a serious to, to, on a, to link it back to link it back to the uh, previous topic, you're already funding the Iron Dome, so why the f didn't that shoot Santa down? That's what I want to know. Well, because um, bad boys and girls don't get presents, so he never had to visit there. Um, look, uh, uh, my my f contention here, and the thing that drives me up the wall, okay, is that there's a very obvious, there's a very clear way of handling this, okay, and it's that you should say Merry Christmas on Christmas. And when it's not Christmas, you say happy holidays. I don't get like this. This seems so straightforward. What like, I guess conservatives want us to live in a world where it's like December 17th and you go to the store and someone says Merry Christmas. No, the f it isn't. What are you talking about? That's not for a week or more. Um, that it's, it's insane to me. Happy holidays isn't even like, you know, oh, you're replacing Christmas or whatever. It's just not f Christmas yet. Um, anyway, yeah, the, the war on Christmas talking point has really dialed down now. I guess it's just all trans people or whatever conservatives are obsessed with, trans cock, I don't know. Um, because the this like Rush Limbaugh era of like American good old boy folksy town hero shit is dying because people won't say Merry Christmas on December 1st. I just haven't heard it in a while. Maybe it's because Tucker Carlson's not currently with Fox. Maybe he'd be doing that bit if he was still with them. Well, I just want to say this point, I was just in New York City and I was so surprised by the hotel rooms were so much more expensive in December because I'd been there multiple times this year. And I thought, oh, well, it's because there's all these great Christmas lights. But literally, other than 30, 30 Rockefeller Center, there wasn't that many Christmas decorations in New York. And I always thought, like, I always envisioned the movie Home Alone, where it's just Christmas everywhere. But New York wasn't like that when I was there. So I do think Christmas is dying. But a lot of that is a Hanukkah envy because Hanukkah gets eight crazy nights and, you know, uh, Christmas only gets one. So you're going to you're going to obviously the Christians are going to be a little jealous about that, you know, and Jesus was a Jew. So they kind of like a lot of Jewish stuff. So, you know, I do think there is a, some sort of a war on Christmas. I think that there's less um, jolly uh, spirits during the holiday seasons. And for whatever reason, maybe because people are struggling financially. I don't know, but it does seem like there is less Christmas decorations and less Christmas joy around the holiday season here in America. I also generally. think Protestants are godless, and this is also a big issue. Like, Catholics know how to throw a party, and Protestants, the only thing they can do to celebrate Christ is to, like, play the same three songs in every department store in America for one and a half months. You say that, Bosh, but, but the Protestants are acting very much like the Catholics in their need to feel oppressed. They, they, they need to be downtrodden. By Certainly, this, they, and this they've taken fake. nothing but the best qualities, to be sure. I just, I can't stand the department store music, you know? Um... Like, does anyone really think we're honoring Christ with the, the the Gaudi, like the nanosecond Thanksgiving ends, or or before? They don't even care. They'll do it before uh, Halloween these days. You know, ridiculous. Jesus Christ would have wanted us to celebrate Halloween with everything decorated in black and orange. The idea of introducing Christmas stuff before then is just ungodly. That point. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I mean, look, I I um I agree. Um, I like uh, I like Halloween, you know, it's very spooky, you know, and, uh, you know, I like the spooky holidays. Um, but as far as, like, Christmas goes, like, maybe everybody realized that, like, you know, uh, the, a fat dude sliding down your chimney, you know, ruin your f chimney is bringing down your property value. Maybe people don't like to encourage that amongst their children. I don't know. Breaking it on the rain, you mean? Yeah. I think people I are getting... Who, who, even has a, who even has a chimney anymore? That's what the green agenda True. is all about. Getting rid of fireplaces was to stop Christmas. It was the ultimate war. You know what's Christmas. hilarious? Flex. It's half you mother bitch about Christmas. You don't even believe in Christmas. But then you want to try to make the, the, the right or the conservatives the cuck in the matter about Christmas. First off, I could give a f two less about any Zionist ideology about what Christmas is and their marketing ploy to keep making me spend my f hard earned money. But you, f especially your socialist, f how about you guys explain to me what Christmas about? means to you? No, no, so because, I mean, everything... Your money. No, no, he's done. Let, 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 let's let him finish Zionist, quick. He, Zionist, he's, 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 Zionist he seems to be on a roll here. Zionists have created this model where they make the, the, these conservative Christians and Catholics all agree to their little approach to Jesus, who they plucked, right? We all know this. And then on the flip side, they're, everybody's like, oh, these conservatives who love them some Jesus on the wall, they're the ones that are upset. I never believed in that white Jesus on the wall. Never. But I'm still a conservative, right? I still believe that everybody has a right to their religion. Yeah, I, I agree that this is a whole bunch of f But just like I would say to Dylan before, and I'll say now, f Israel, f Ukraine. Don't give a f about any of it, including your holidays. I agree. That's Israel what I'm saying. Stop so y'all can quit arguing about it.
Fuck Christmas. I have some Fuck Hitler Christmas. Anybody who's Brown. complaining about no. Christmas becoming outdated is just uh, being a crybaby. Critical support that's, for that's Israel it. and their war against Christmas. Like, uh, this is very much like an enemy of my enemy of my enemy. But, you know, like, if, if that's what it takes, then all right. I am willing to allow the IDF to be deployed to American Macy's so they can stop playing that music so, were, like at the beginning uh, of november onward critical support for israel is a very different tune than you used to have on twitter j, j dams are the only possible oh, solution to um non-stop christmas tunes santa should be a black man with all the breaking and entering he does and that's not a racial thing that's just a statistical oh my thing. god alex you can't say that Good yes god. you can Please. say that i do think santa would he I has a lot of black characteristics your what? fucking house if you don't shut the up, Alex. That, what did I tell that's you? Just, you know, these are not. Well, I, I don't think these are the voting system we have here. Women actually love Christmas. I, I love think a Santa holiday that celebrates like men giving presents to women. I love it. It's yeah. perfect. I love Christmas. That's great. Santa should be a gay man. He has sex with his elves. In my fantasy. Wait, I thought you said you didn't want him to be gay. You need to be consistent on this. Do you or do you? No, not I want him to, to be, be a gay? black gay. I want him to be like uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. I would like. Are you? To be can I just say? Can RuPaul I just, Alex, Santa you, would serve cunt to be sure. This isn't really relevant to anything, but are, are you AOC? Because that's the news, right? That's the. I wish I'm about to be back in DC. I'm about to go sniff AOC's office area and just see if i can smell this is, can this is modern shit. trad conservatism it's like it's it's like how when you go on twitter and they're all like gunner lollicons or whatever and it's like this is going to bring back the fourth reich it's like that in aoc you know it's the, Why do you the, always bring the, a lovely the, the right the what right was lovely the right was correctly the Isn't right was like correctly your... criticized for hyper fixating on aoc for years so now it's like all right well we might as well own it <laughs> It's us. Modern conservatism. Like um, and Alex yeah. Stein. Two white it's boys that. privileged talking all the shit. What the f Both of you cucks. Both of you. You're a f***ing retarded. Oh Both of you. Okay. You okay, mother okay, so You're so both are f***ing retarded. Wait, 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 I don't, wait, this guy, this guy's okay, cooking. Wait, 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 this guy's pause, cooking. Pause. Hold on. I'm saying, I'm asking everybody quiet down, please. Help me, help me moderate. Help me moderate. How do you, I'm not prepared for this joke. I'm asking you guys to help me moderate by quieting down, okay? Help me help you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this topic was supposed to be about Christmas and the holiday season. This is supposed to be the soft yeah, topic, a topic where everybody, everybody ho ho ho. Do you, oh, it's, no, a it's a dumb topic. It's a fucking topic. Why yeah. is this stupid? It's a, it's a brilliant topic. We're talking about the war on Christmas. It's an important actually, issue. I actually think there's a lot of interesting yeah, stuff not, to talk about with real. regard to like I don't know culture of um, family homes. Okay, wait. Let me let me let me let me pull the room. Who believes the war on Christmas is real? Raise your hand. It's a proxy war. <laughs> okay, why is it real for the people who think it's real? And how is it real? How does it demonstrate? Wait, 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 hey, hey, Kevin. Kevin, I want to examine the G. I want to ex examine other opinions, Kevin. In the well, holiday who the season. Who believes in it? Who the f believes in it, Dylan? This I'm is asking one of those stupid them. ass takes you put up. You put what do you mean? You some... just said, wait, 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 redneck. I said, I just fuck asked it the all. room. I redneck. said, fuck I asked the room. Ukraine. Who believes. Completely. Okay, I'm asking. I'm going to ask it a. Wait, Thank Dylan, you. did you did you do the uh, Orthodox uh, Christmas? Yeah, I only meant Orthodox Christmas, of course. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm actually like, Christmas. well, you we were in Ukraine. Did you do Orthodox Christmas or did you? I didn't like, do Orthodox. No, I actually I celebrated Passover when really? I was in Ukraine. Oh, yeah, nice. I, I met a oh. a nice uh, some some Ukrainian Jews and they invited me over for Passover. Yeah, this this supports the Israel really? is destroying Christmas theory that we were examining exactly. earlier. Look, no, wait, so you distracted me. My, my point. Wait, wait, wait. I, like, can we stop? Let me let me lead the show here for a moment. I'm gonna do a. How do I do a server mute? Everybody. Okay. Alex Stein and Lecture Fan, you guys believe the war on Christmas is real to some capacity. I think MPO also semi raised a hand. Can you explain that? Because it seems like the rest of the room doesn't understand. It well, really. It, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think what it is is it's um it's a stand-in for like just attacking Christianity generally, right? The 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 left can't stand the fact that you know people believe in a non-secular power that is you know greater than themselves right um and so they they come at anything that is christian whatever and and to redneck's point right it doesn't matter whether you support the christmas holiday the commercialism and stuff like that which is it's way overdone i get that um but really the message the message for christians is it's it's about the birth of of who they believe is the savior, right? Um, and you can't attack anybody else's religion the way you can attack Christianity in this country, and it's fucked up, right? You, 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 don't, don't, you know, you know, you Donald don't, Trump literally just called again for a, for a ban on Muslims, right? You can't go. You can't. Oh, for 
That's sakes, funny. Donald Trump, Jesus Christ, get out of your head, you bitches. You can't. Okay, he's not even running for president. Not wait, 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 let me, let me, let, let's let, let's let MPU finish his thought, right? Let, let me let him right. finish his thought quick, okay. Then let yeah. Redneck talk. Thought first. Ten seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. Um, if you went after Ramadan, okay, which is the Muslim High Holy Month, right? If you went at it with the same kind of, ver of, of verve that they go after Christmas or anything that's Christian related, there'd be a f uproar. And I think that I think the hypocrisy of the left is just in insane over it. Our lecture yeah, fan, so, you're also a yeah. fan of Jesus. Could you uh, well, chime in on this? Well, first of all, I do. I do think that Vosh was correct when he said that the war on Christmas is not really a big political issue right now. I think that's largely because Trump was so successful in bringing it back and people started saying Merry Christmas again. More perfect unions, right? That would you say Vosh Trump had, won the Vosh, war on Vosh, Christmas? Vosh, Vosh, is, mm -hmm. Vosh admitted, yes. yeah, pretty much, <laughs> okay. pretty much did. Yeah. Vosh admitted, though, that he's a religious bigot. And so this does come from not only not only a release of religious hatred and religious bigotry from the atheist left, but and it's not just Christmas. There is a war on all of our holidays. The Democrats and the left are trying to replace July 4th with what? Juneteenth. They're trying to replace uh, the Christmas with Kwanzaa, which is a completely made up thing. So and, and that's all designed to try to collapse, to try to collapse. The, hold on. Let me finish. Let no, me finish. Disagree. That's all designed to try to to try to destroy the foundations of our country and our holidays, whether it's July 4th or Christmas. Then you collapse the society and try to replace it with socialism and screw Halloween. I, I won't celebrate. What did, Halloween. Whoa, wait, 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 Slow down. I, I love international relations theory, and so I wanted to ask it from that perspective. So would you say that the war on Christmas is a proxy war in the wider left's cultural uh, crusade against the holiday season generally, July, all the other holidays, Thanksgiving as well, of course? Oh, I think it's, it's absolutely part of the, global, the globalist yeah. left. Absolutely. Globalist left. Got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. There can we I, go. Can, can I say something? <laughs> I, I feel like... For for how much the right likes to talk about freedom of speech, freedom of speech, I should be able to say happy holidays whenever the fuck I want to. Why sure. it, why the f are the why the f is the right of all people trying to police my f words coming out of my mouth? You can't do that shit. Don't ever think that you can talk to me and stop me from saying happy holidays. I will say happy holidays. You can say Merry Christmas back, so and I won't f stop you. I'm not gonna put tape over your mouth it's only conservatives and 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 you know right wingers who are ha like having a f meltdown over me saying happy holidays so now no. start. Star. So now star. Star. hold on star. 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 wait 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 let's let's have let's have one let's okay okay wait who wanted to respond to stardust's uh coaching points Okay, I'll let lecture fans respond, then we'll go over to I Redneck. Was, I was just going to say real quick, hilarious to hear Stardust and the left pretending to care about free speech. Ha! Yeah, right. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're talking I'm literally the person who is like the most, like, I will talk to anybody and let them say, you know, crazy shit. And talk she has an OnlyFans. Stardust has no, an OnlyFans, so she's free speech. I do not have speech. an OnlyFans. I do not yes. have an okay, OnlyFans, star. but I've been let, on let, let show. Let those amongst us. Alex knows I'm pro free speech, so. Okay, red, she red is. Next. She let is. those who I have not seen pass Stardust the first is. stone. Uh, this, this, is, this is strictly for Star. I'm so fucking proud of you. You were so good on that one. Keep yelling louder. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Are you simping for Stardust like that, Redneck? Well, no, you were, no, you were doing a promo. A little bit you, self, you were doing a promo for your AOC OnlyFans work in the future. I want to show her. I want to show this over the pixel. I saw pixels. I saw. I saw. I don't know if anybody else saw Pixel's fantastic edit of the of the of the promo for the for the show. It had all of your names replaced with the word men, and then her face plastered on the front. It was brilliant. It was beautiful. And so I want to yeah. throw it over to her because you haven't had much time to talk. I'm just so happy to be here today so that you don't get canceled for not having enough, you know, representation. Like, yes, I'm thank you. So please help me, please. Among please. esteemed intellectuals. Like, I just, I love talking about this shit. I'm so happy you brought it back. And I'm just, yeah, really proud to be here. Do I not count as a woman now, Pixel? Is oh, no. Real? Oh, no. Oh, your name's still on there. Oh, your name's still on there. I don't, don't still on there. I don't think your name. You put Manny Cake's name on there too. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, oh my God, no. I lift us all up. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. Right. Okay. Right, okay. I'm God damn. Just also, typical so of women. There's two of them, up. and they start fighting. It's about time. About time. Alex, Stein, are you happy? We have so much female representation on the show. 
Yes, I started us and I are friends. So yeah, I'm, I love my girl Star. She's looking good. She's got the right camera angle, trying to get the, you know a few more clicks on the tits. I know what she's trying to do there. And then I, uh, Pixie, oh, come on, seriously, I I barely. Star, you're going clothes. cleavage. I've never yeah, seen you this I'm cleaved like, out. Okay, dude, I dress more conservatively than all of the. Star, you can't win. This here. guy's a gooner. You, you could. There's you nothing you could wear. Star, you're showing yeah, it off know, tonight. No, I know what you're trying to do. You knew I was on the debate. You knew I was on the debate. Not winning the points in the point system. Well, that's a fair no, fucking point, Alex. I'll give you that one. You got her on that one. Star, this guy is a king for clothed women. You can't win. There's nothing you could wear. That would... I, I probably, I dress more conservatively 100% than on most conservative women, and I guarantee you, I probably live more conservatively than most conservative women. This guy women. has to wear a condom on the subway so he doesn't ruin his trousers. What about trousers? calendar gate? Wait, wait, Dylan, what about Calendar Gate? Are all those Republican women whores now? Because they, did, did you guys hear about you Calendar Gate? You never touch me on a calendar, by the way, like that, okay? Dylan, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Calendar Gate, the conservative calendar that's making no, all but the that, conservatives No, but fight? that sounds like something I need to buy. Yeah, well, look it up. Uh, Seth Weathers made a calendar of conservative women holding ultra right beer, and all of the conservatives have been fighting each oh, other definitely. on Twitter all weekend because they say that it's soft core porn, but it's not. Yeah. I mean, the girls. I mean, have you seen that star? Are you familiar with it? I have seen that. Yeah. So, um, a huge person leading the leading that is the Bryson guy, the rapper. Bryson um, Gray. Bryson, yes. Bryson Gray, and then um, a few other people are basically saying, "Oh, uh, this, you know, this is sacrilegious. This is satanic." You know, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, soft yeah, they're, they're porn. putting, yeah, soft core porn. And then there are a bunch of other women who are like, well, you know, I, I'm just going to dress how I want to dress. We're just having fun with this, you know? So, yeah. So, yeah, but conservatives don't want women to dress how they want to dress. They've, they've no interest it in that. It depends on the conservative. It depends on which way Well, all conservatives to. want yeah. women to dress slutty. They just want to complain about it. That's too. not true. No, Vosh, that's not you, true. You that's, have that's been the, the biggest. You I've ever why do you, been on a why, panel do you push, why do you push so many perceptions? Well, like that's the issue, right? That's why I told the, you you the and fucking Alex are both the same mother. You're both mother are the same. You just need to look at the mirror. You mother. Well, we're, we're both same. cartel supporters you for climb, different reasons. Hey, that bullshit. You guys, you guys both sit online and talk off your me. asses without. You just say the stupidest of shit without ever. Actually thinking about how it applies to the actual people. Wait, on the what? Ground. What did I say that you disagree with? This is talking about what the hell are you okay, talking I can about? Okay, I mean, hold on. I, I can start. Alex, 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 hold on. Alex, 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 but then we got to mm -hmm. We're gonna. We only have six minutes left in a round, everybody. I, I, so I only need a minute to cook. That's it. Listen, Alex. I don't. I, I like your jokes. I think some of your shits about some of the most hilarious shit in the world. But you do say some racist shit. You come out of pocket from your mouth, and I'm telling you, from someone that's been on the streets, you better be careful because when you pop your mouth off the way you do online, and some of the racist shit you do say, I'm surprised you were still walking with a, a, a solid grill. Just being firm, and telling you from a transracial racist here. A black you Santa vouch, would knock the shit out of him. All this, all this socialist bullshit that you talk and spouse, you never actually address who's in charge, though. You never address who's in power. Sure, it's all fun and games and everybody collectively helps each other. You know, I'm a redneck. I'm a farmer. We're the original socialist, remember? But guess what? Guess what? You never address that. So you, all your points are always from a point of privilege. You and Alex are the both same white cucks in the world talking all this shit from opposite polar spectrums, and you're not looking at the people in the middle. That's the point I want to make. Too much of this, too much of this bullshit's happening these days, and I came out here to get this point across. Fuck Israel, fuck Ukraine. All this war is about money. The trafficking that's happening down south is about kids. Not even and that's we're wives. talking about the topic and is you, Christmas. I'm bringing it all the together because I know I'm gonna get voted off. I this it's all about money and the presence are to be the presence need to be freedom More and your Christmas. humanity well you pray and, and israel, 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 israel are the same and neither yeah, of them yeah, celebrate yeah, christmas that was such a good set box it was very Pixie. good but let me just rebut one thing that I make racial jokes. Of course I do, but I literally I hire and employ multiple black people. So to think that I would ever be racist. Motherfucker, I don't care he if you also makes hire, underage sex slaves. They should punch jokes. your ass out for saying that shit in Minecraft. Look, dude, just point blank is this. What? What you most you people that make these racist. comments. Why would I have so many African American employees? I wouldn't surround myself just, with them. Yeah, can I, just point I was out. racist. Yeah, can I so, wait? Uh, can I? Can can slave I, master had a whole bunch of black people around them. You dumbass! Oh, what you're, the you're, fuck you're trying, trying to say? Okay, okay. okay. I mean, Let's reel it in. Reel it in. I, I don't. We're, we're not at the top. Okay, we're everybody. I'm gonna ask everybody to quiet down because we're going towards kicking people. Uh, because it's the end of the round. We only got four minutes left. So since we only got four minutes left, everybody, why should you stay another round? I'm gonna start with Kevin. 
I, I do, well, I, I don't really give a f- if I stay another round or not. I just want to point out that Vosh, being the dirty slut that he is, they were talking about cleavage. He gets his tits out straight away. Outrageous. <laughs> vote for me. Don't vote for me. I couldn't give a f- Much love. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, Alex. Pimp on a blimp, always and forever, baby. Let me fly high tonight. Let's go. We're just getting started. We're just turning on. We're up to like four or five. We're going to try to get these things to 11 tonight. Okay. What does 11 look like if this is 4 or 5? Bad, Dylan. Bad to the bone. I'm serious. It's going to get wicked and wild. Like a Will Smith song. We can go wild, wild west. Oh, I'm obviously the only rational one here, so. Okay, well, I, I, that's a good point. A pixel. Um, can I stay because I'm pretty and I'm looking for a husband? So. Okay, that's, that's, that's an argument. Uh, redneck. You don't keep me. I hate all of you. I don't give a. F- I'm done. I'm retired. <laughs> That's I true. Totally agree. We just we did bring him out of retirement. Uh, Stardust. If you get rid of me, you are sexist and you're racist. Okay, so don't don't you think about it. If you think about it, you're a bigot. Two for one. Making use of that camera angle. That is a good use of the camera angle. Yeah, that's a very good use. Oh, yeah. It's a like it's like intentional. Are you joking with you? Do you think this is a joke right now? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I swear to God, if you would have shown this much love on your own show the other day, the last time we debated, you would have done so much better, Star. Okay. God damn it, where was this? Uh, fire? Red, uh, not Redneck, uh, Vosh. I'm also going to go for the pretty and looking for a husband angle. Thank you. <laughs> I'm right here, bitch. What? Let's go. Did you stabilize on one rate? Uh, is it one side now? Or is that for sure? Or is it just men? Or are we playing games? Because, I mean, we're if always I get single, playing I, games. I could be looking. Okay. Just redneck, are you gay? Head. Are you gay, Redneck? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a sexually active 53, almost 53 year old man that if anybody wants to hit on me and donate to my fan book, if I have to have one, I'm, at that, I'm almost at that point, right? I mean, there's a, there's a viewer for everybody. And I, I was told that I'm pretty good looking. So, it, I mean, I'm yeah, not afraid anything, of my sexuality, Alex. Anything that so you're gay, so you're homosexual. Your last one. Uh, Why don't you stay that? another round? Vosh, Vosh, why should you stay another round? Oh why no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you out? Yeah, I'm going for the um, pretty and looking for a husband angle. Okay, got you. So the other the the countenance of Pixel. Okay, well we we've got the the kicks here, and again, don't consider it personal. It's all for profit. Uh, we're first going to be kicking. <clears throat> okay, one second. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, Stardust, Kevin, MPU, and Red. Very sorry. The racist. Mm. Racist. That is racist. 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 That I gotta is say, racist Stardust. I d- we weren't gonna kick you. Then you said I can be racist and sexist, and then I had to. It's two for one. Of course. Of Thank course. Thank you. So you just uh, going on the old ages. Yep. Oh. But I'm kidding, of course. Thank you all for coming on. I appreciate it. A hippy dippy anniversary. The reason you guys were all invited is because I believe you guys are the heart and soul hippy dippy because you all have been part of hippy dippy for so long and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Dylan, can I say one thing to you? What's Seriously? that? Thank you. Seriously. I hope you're safe and um, keep doing what you're doing because you're one of the only people on the left that I do respect because you go out and do what you say and you believe. That's all I ask from everybody. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Can I just say one thing, which is uh, go and follow me at KFLogan1875? Yeah. That's true. Sigma That's grind right. set, bitch. Let's go. And Stardust yeah. at Twitch. Star- Stardust at Twitch or on YouTube. I prefer YouTube. But yeah, thank you. Me too. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, and you guys are all racist and I hate you. Wow. And MPU, you lasted for... Uh, one second. Uh, if you were one of the starters, so you lasted for an hour and a half. Well, you know, when, you're, when you've been around as long as I have, you just kind of naturally drag through. So... Um, <laughs> Twitch.tv, the more perfect union. So thanks very much, Alex. Nice to meet you here on this thing. Vosh, sure. I've not really had any inter- interactions with you. Uh, I think I would like to have a conversation with you at some point. And oh, lecture for him. I know. Love you to death. And Pixels, keep singing because you do it so well. You guys have a good one. Dylan, stay safe. Thank you very much. Let's bring in the new fresh meat. Bring him in. Fresh meat, fresh meat. I have to wait for Danabo to do it. Better not be any women in the next group of people because calling them wait. fresh meat is very oh, you're misogynistic. Right. Wait, are there any women? Oh, there are! No! 
Okay. Well, uh -oh. Man, I was about to be a real pick me. Now we've got some new guests. We've got Jeb Tam. We got Sprouticus. We have Maddie, and we've got Joe Lewis, who has a very interesting profile picture. Is that who? Is that Obama? Who, who is that? Spicy Obama. It's uh, Ice Spice Obama. Oh, it's Ice Spice Obama. It's Ice Spice Obama. <laughs> what are you talking about me? Yeah, I was looking at your profile, but I was trying to figure out who that was. You know, talking some shit while, it's, while my Discord's connecting? I'm trying to figure out, what's your your profile image? Is that is that Ice Spice Obama? What is, who, what is that? You're you saying you about? can't it's tell a... black people apart, Dylan. I can't. It's Obama, what are you talking about? It's one, it's one of the two. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't remember that hairstyle. Okay, anyway, we're going to get into the next topic. Uh, to do, do one second, I'm looking at the list here. I think it was uh, Colorado, wasn't it? It's the Trump Colorado decision. So Trump uh, got yeeted off the Colorado Republican primary ballot. And also, since uh, we announced the topic, he also got yeeted off the main primary uh, ballot. Uh, so he's been yeeted oh, off oh, two oh, primary please. ballots. But this is not the only decision on this that's been uh, on this case like this. In other states, they've decided the exact opposite, that this is not allowed, that they don't agree with it for any number of reasons. And so I wanted to throw it around the room. What do you guys think of the Trump Colorado decision? I'm going to keep it as vague as possible so you guys can uh, grab, grab with it anywhere. And I'm going to go quickly around the room and make sure everybody gets a, a little bit of time to say something before everybody, you know, jumps into it. Because, you know, just, you know, new, new, we got a whole new four people. So let's start with Jeb Tan. Yeah, so I mean, I'm a conservative. I voted for Trump in 2016. If he runs against Biden again, I would vote for him. And I think that... Colorado was 100% correct to remove him from the ballot. I think the 14th Amendment is actually uh, absolutely relevant here. Um, and the legal argument that it doesn't apply to president is just super weak. Um, and I also have a serious problem with the fact that the dissent didn't even try to argue that he didn't commit or engage in insurrection. Um, so I don't even think we need to argue on that here because they didn't even try to argue it. So it seems as though the real argument for them is that it somehow doesn't apply to presidents, which doesn't even pass the sniff test to me. It just seems completely illogical. Stein. It's criminal. They got to free my boy Trump. I mean, what they're trying to do to him is it's obviously they want to disqualify him because they are threatened by him. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a it's a total work. It's a criminal. I mean, everybody wants to say it was an insurrection, yet they are able to reconvene within three hours and still certify the election. So I don't know. I mean, I just I really I, I do not consider it an insurrection. So, yeah, I think it's it's absolutely criminal. And they need to free my boy Trump. But if Trump does go to jail, it might help him with the black vote or the Latino vote. So, like, I don't know. Maybe all this stuff is actually good that they're trying to kick him off about there because maybe it'll actually just pump him up more. You know, I think it might be um, counterproductive and actually, you know, help him in some sort of weird way. Okay, we're going to go over to Joe Lewis now. That's crazy. I thought Alex, I, I thought everybody was just letting Alex just talk and he was just was muted. Nobody was saying shit. But I hadn't muted since the last time we were on a panel together. That's crazy. Oh, you had me I, muted? I didn't even know what the fuck was happening. I was like, is he talking right now? And everybody's just like watching it happen. Like, oh shit. You I'm didn't miss anything, don't worry. Bad, fam. Yeah, he had, he had Yo, you muted from your up, last panel. Sorry, I'm not talking about <laughs> Lolly right now. I'm sorry. No, just uh, uh, patroning underage sex slaves from the cartel. Uh, go on, so Joe. Long. Joe Lewis. <laughs> it's been so long. I still had Alex server muted. That's crazy. What's up? Um, I disagree Welcome. with the decision. Um, I don't think it's, I, I, I don't know. I just don't like the idea of refs deciding how the, what the game is. And broadly speaking beyond that, I'm more of an all or nothing in this case. So I really hope it does get challenged up to the Supreme court for clarification, because if it is the case that he's barred in these two States so far, then it's all or nothing for me. So he has to not exist on all the ballots or he has to exist on all. I think when you have a situation where you're basically barring Republicans of deciding who the presidential candidate is. That's a, that's, I take an issue with that, regardless of political ideology and stuff like that. So I hope Republicans are ready to fight for something like this for the clarification. As long as we get the clarification, that's fantastic. And I understand the argument, 14th Amendment. Um, I just don't really agree with it on the principle. Okay, lecture fan? Yeah, I actually I actually spent like an hour on uh, the talk radio program that I guest hosted this morning talking about this. There's there's five or six major legal issues that you could talk about with this where it's completely wrong. Pretty obvious. Cl clearly, clearly undemocratic. I saw that I saw that AOC ha had tweeted out that the best way to protect democracy is to remove your political opponents from the ballot. 
the same way that Putin just did to, to several potential candidates. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe they, you know, the Democrats would maybe like to send Trump up to sure. a Arctic Circle prison, just like they uh, Putin has done to Alexei Navalny. But no, I mean, you you could I could spend an hour talking about in depth all of the five or six main legal arguments about how wrong this is, but it, it's it's clearly outrageous. Clearly, they're scared of Trump. Uh, you know, clear clear. I don't know if the Supreme Court will take it. It's just so wrong. And, and Trump is like 36 and one on all of these. And I think you're wrong, Dylan, that he's actually been booted off the ballot, I think, in both Colorado and in Maine. Both of those bodies that made that decision actually said, ah, we're going to we're going to put our own decision on hold. And actually, Trump is going to go on the ballot, even though we want to look cool at the cocktail parties and say, yeah, Trump was an insurrectionist, even though he clearly wasn't. All he did was challenge the election and have a constitutional legal theory under the Electoral Count Act about the power of the pr vice president when they count, which, by the way, Congress then went and clarified the Electoral Count Act afterwards, thus proving that there were valid legal arguments to be made. Pixel. I think American democracy is barely functioning at this point, but I think the decision in Colorado was legally sound. I think it will get challenged all the way to the Supreme Court, and I think that Trump will be on the ballot. And I, I think that Trump potentially going to jail actually helps the white fan base because they want him to be such a f martyr. And I, I think that's where this is going, and they're going to be like, look, the establishment put him in jail. We got to bring back our savior, and I literally think that that is what is going to happen. That's all I have to. Kevin. Say. Yo, yeah, thanks, Dylan. So I'm gonna get to. I'm so I'm gonna get to answering. I'm gonna get to answering the prompt, but I want to say, you know, I uh, I went out. I was on the pre-show. It was hype. I went and got some pizza. You know, shown and whatnot. And what I, I came back here. I came back here. I had to come back here because I need to confront Alex before I get to this prompt here. You know, oh, I no. saw your AOC shit, dude. I just want to say, you know, he's, he, bro, you ain't no pimp on a blimp. You're a creep in a Jeep. And it's a creeping Christmas with Alex Stein. And dude, that <laughs> AOC shit, dude, dude, you got issues, man. You got issues. I do have so issues. I, I, I yeah, do no, have I issues. know you I got that's issues. Diagnosed. That's what yeah, I'm yeah. saying, dude. It's 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 really creepy. Like I don't know. It's like you're trying to make uh, you're well, you trying know, to make like creeping. You know, you you're know, trying I'm to make like creeping. <laughs> you're trying to make gross. like creeping cool or whatever, but it, it ain't going anywhere, dude. So uh, get get to this actual prompt, right? Here's the thing. Maybe this is a little bit of a hot take. I know it's a hot take. I know it's a hot take on X. Every time I bring this up. Uh, it gets like 80,000 impressions and people are like, oh my God, how can he like Trump and Biden? No, I got to keep it real. Donald Trump is the most progressive Republican uh, basically ever to become president. He's the most pro-LGBT president ever from the Republican side. Now, granted, it's a pretty low bar. Republican Party, eh, pretty reactionary, right? But as far as reactionaries go, Trump is like the most progressive of them. And as far as Joe Biden most progressive, most pro-labor president since FDR. Both of these guys are good by the American political standard. And guess what? The establishment, they don't really like either of them. They like Romney Clinton action. They don't like MAGA Biden action. In my view, you want to unite the country. Uh, here, here, maybe this is a radical take, but this would do a lot to bring down the tension in American politics. Joe Biden and Donald Trump come out, give joint press conference. They both announce that if they win, the other will be their VP candidate and they will restore national greatness to America, bring the factories back, build the wall and support union jobs. And so I got to say, the establishment, man, they are terrified of Donald Trump winning. So they're trying to get him off the ballot. And yeah, did what, what, did what he did co uh, constitute an insurrection? No, because guess what? You have the right to challenge uh, any election, and then it goes through its process. Uh, did the dude with the horns in the Capitol, did, was he insurrectionary? Sure, okay, but that's not Trump. And here's the deal, right? Um, at the end of the day, you they should work together. Up. Yeah, they should work together. And so uh, let's uh, join together and uphold MAGA Bidenism thought.
Absolutely. Okay. What, okay. what kind of autism do you have, though, with your speech pattern like Dude, that? I'm not, the one, I'm not the one what, what bragging. Kind of well, I'm not the one bragging in front of like 2,000 people that you're going to go creep up AOC's office, dude. Creep so, up AOC. No, that's, what what you, said, that's what you said. What you, you literally guys? said that, dude. You literally said that, dude. You're a creep and a cheat. No, dude, you're a creep and a cheat. No, you're a creep and a cheat. I'm the pimp on a blimp. but No, you're the creep and the cheat. You're the creep and the cheat. You're blimp. This is good stuff. You pop your own blimp with your with your creepiness, dude. Okay, okay. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. There's still two people who haven't stopped both of you. There's two people who still haven't gone. I got to say, Alex. 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 Bro, you're like Alex. the only person to like break about sexual assault, dude. Stop! It's not sexual stop. assault. You're like you're like you're, you're like Epstein I'm so Bill, sorry, dude. Dylan. <laughs> okay, they're both muted. They're Jules, both they both been put in the doghouse. For, I'm, I'm gonna. Th one what, what 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 is so the procedural? Bad. Okay, I'm gonna it's, unmute it's them, but stop. Question. Don't attack. Yes. So for Alex, the low key would though, right? You would, right? Like given the opportunity. What do you mean? Come on! Come on! He, well, he's already like Come assaulted on. her. He's already aroused no, her. Well, I, we, we, I, have the video, we have the video, <laughs> Joe. Um, he's a okay, creep and a cheat. We've got a topic. Can I, can I answer it? I said that she's We will not talk about how much of a pussy you are once you see people who give them their opening. Calm down. Big booty Latina. It's a legendary. Yeah, no, see, that's what I'm talking about, dude. You're like the creep and the cheat. This is like saying bridge, dude. Your deep sexual desires. But I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to I saw the video. This is good stuff, dude. Dude, like, everybody saw go. the video, this Alex. Saw the video too. Okay. Everybody okay. saw the video, Alex. It's a creepy Christmas, creepy Christmas with Alex Stein. It's a creepy Christmas. Yeah, it's a creepy Christmas with Alex Stein, my guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is hippy dippy, sorry, the sorry, world's yeah, best boomer podcast. Yeah, I know. That's, that's kind of the problem, right? So, <laughs> okay, boss, that's what I'm saying. That's why I came here, dude. Real mega conservatives. Take the L, Alex. Take the L, Take Alex. The L. I'm the yeah, dude, you, you put the L in Alex, dude. You put the yeah, L in Alex, I'm talking about 80,000 impressions. I upload a fajita plate from a Taco Bell or something, and I get 80,000 impressions, son. So don't even come at the king, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's because uh, right. right. you guys have had your bits, and now like, I have a bit. Can we please? Can we please? Have have like please have we have to shuffle the bits. Can you guys please? Can you guys help me out? And reel it in just a bit so we can have the last two people give their opinions like, on the topic. Spraticus, Spraticus, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear okay. you the whole time. I was just laying them run. Um, because if so I was you were, you, you were hurting them. me, you were helping them and you were enabling no. them. So if I, I was going to talk you to... behind them, I, if I was going to talk behind them, no, you enabled their mess. behavior. That's negative 50 points in our <laughs> DNC system. You enabled their behavior. Uh, anyway, well, continue. That's continue. That's that's Oh man, it's, it's, a good thing not part of, the it's a good thing I'm not. Wait one second. It's a good thing I'm not part of the DNC. Um, but I, I voted for Trump in 2016. I voted for Trump in 2020. Um, and I agree with Joe Lewis. It has to be all or nothing. This does not hurt Trump at all to be kicked off the ballot in Colorado and in Maine. Trump was not going to win Colorado. Trump was not going to win Maine. The only states he's getting kicked off the ballot in are the states he was for sure not going to win. Uh, Michigan and uh, I believe Minnesota are two of the states that put this up uh, for to try and enact this and kick Trump off the ballot. But it was denied by both states. Those are the states that would have mattered. Um, these two states that have done it don't truly matter in the long term, in the long run of things. Um, but ultimately, it has to be it has to be all of them or none of them. And ultimately, it's got to go to Supreme Court. The way the Supreme Court's leaning right now is they're going to side with Trump, and that's how that's how procedurally it's going to work. Now, do I agree that Trump should be kicked off the ballot? Um, potentially, yes, but it would take a guilty verdict um, by the court. And anyone in this, anyone inside the United States is considered innocent until proven guilty. It would take a guilty verdict by the court of something that would uh, allude to insurrection or the harboring of such insurrectionists. Uh, now, the last person is Vosh. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with that and, and with what Joe said to an extent. Um, so Donald Trump did it he deserves to be kicked off the ballot but it needs to be done at a national level i mean ideally this should be a criminal thing he should die in prison 
Um, but you know, we don't live in a perfect world and there's no such thing as impartial, uh, judicial activity. So, you know, the only states that are actually going to rule correctly on this, even if they decided to make a national issue of it would be blue states. He wasn't going to win anyway. In a fair system, this would be a fair and fine ruling. But in the current one, I think it's just going to fuel the persecution complex of, you know, uh, Trump supporters. Though that hasn't really been working out that well for them. You know, like Donald Trump is currently saddled with half a dozen, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, trial cases he's running between. And I mean, conservative media is barely even picking up on them anymore. I mean, you know that fully like 50 to 70 percent of Donald Trump's waking days are spent listening to lawyers tell him how f he is or how he's out of money. And um, given that environment, I don't know if another railing from the criminal justice system is going to lead to that much of a persecution complex. Like, how much can you oversaturate that pot? Eventually, you run out of shits to give. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I don't really care that much. The Supreme Court's going to overturn it unless for some reason they do a wacky gamer move and don't, in which case I care about it very much. Yo, I got all a question. Right, Yo, I got a question for all the orange man bad people here, though. I just got a quick question. Would oh. you rather oh. <laughs> would you rather Ron DeSantis then come in and do all of his reactionary BS and basically wage, you know, transgenocide, et cetera? Uh, or would you rather have Donald Trump, who is, as I said, the most progressive? Now, I, I would, I would, I would wait, stop for well, a moment. I would, wait, wait, stop. I'm asking you guys to stop for a moment because this is actually a later subtopic. It's uh are there better candidates in the Republican primary? Who is sure. the best of the bunch? Right. So that is actually a question later. So I'm going to put that on hold. Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so one of the things I want to touch on is this idea of like it being sort of morally wrong, regardless of the law, we should probably just not do it because it's going to fuel his success. It's, it's bullshit. It shouldn't matter. As conservatives, we should agree it shouldn't matter. Because guess what? Trump's bitching and whining about how it's undemocratic. Who are the guys for the past decade we've been telling people we don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. The purpose of the Constitution is to provide limitations and a foundation for democracy. If Donald Trump broke the Constitution, you conservatives should step the fuck up, get his cock out of your mouth, and say he shouldn't be able to run for president. Because he if the Democrats the were found out tomorrow to have colluded against Donald Trump in a court of law, you would immediately be crying, none of these should be able to run for president. But all of a sudden, because it's Trump, well, maybe the presidency doesn't count, and maybe this little subtext, you know, officers of the state, it's a little bit of, I don't know. Stop being a pussy. He's not a conservative. He did the thing that the Constitution Based. says not to do. And if you're a constitutional conservative, that should outrage you quite a bit. So in terms of should we nothing. let Ron DeSantis do transgenocide? I don't give a f It should not matter about anything other than did Donald Trump break the law? No, this is like did, institutional cringe still, right now, yeah, dude. Uh, not, uh, you just admitted that Donald Trump wait, 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 is, one, is, one, is one, one at a time, please, Kevin. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like conservatism is is it's pretty cringe and as i said donald trump is again as far as republican politicians go elected presidency most progressive in history for the u.s now granted you're right um, yeah he spent way more than history and passed more gun control than any president all progressive minded people should have one, one at a time i can't all, hear anything all progressive minded people should have critical support to donald trump over ron DeSantis, nikki haley chris christie and all these other goons who, guess what, if you took Trump off the ballot and you just said he can't run, one, uh, that wouldn't go over too well. And he has like 70 million loyal supporters that would say, no, we want to be able to vote for him. But even if you could, even if you could just say, no, he can't run or, oh, he's in jail. By the way, if he goes to jail, he still probably has a 45 percent chance of winning. But let's just say he can't run. OK, so then what do you wind up you with? You wind up with the dude from Florida who wants to basically genocide all the trans people. You wind up with you wind up you wind up with Nikki Haley. You wind up with Nikki Haley, who basically. Basically, who basically I mean, the wants legal to go and, is and, 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 and let him finish. Let him finish. Argue against it. No, dude, dude, dude it's my turn to speak right now, dude. You gotta calm down. You gotta calm down. I'm so, sure. or, or you wind up with Chris, or you, or you wind up with Chris Christie, who's the biggest shell for the dismantling and, and national dilapidation Fuck of the United yeah, States so in the interest of the corporate establishment. Right, so, so, okay, 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 Kevin, Kevin, I gotta ask you. Yeah. You said that. If Trump goes to prison, I don't know. Let's say he went to prison all for the classified documents thing, or who knows what. Yeah, right? whatever. It doesn't matter. If he, matter went, to, what if he went to prison, you said that he has a basically like a fifty percent chance of winning. 
No, no, I don't. I don't. I think Biden has the advantage. And I think if he went to jail, Biden would still have the advantage. But what I'm saying is I wouldn't be surprised. Do you surprised. think that would help or hurt him with independence if he went to prison? I wouldn't be surprised if nine times out of 20, you ran that simulation and Donald Trump gets inaugurated, but from prison. So what he has to get then? inaugurated via nine proxy. Nine times out of 10, he, he, he could no, get nine inaugurated. Nine times out of 20, I said 45. 20. I said 45%. I think Biden has the advantage. By the way, if you ask me, who would I rather have, Biden or Trump? I'd rather have Biden. But I also okay. rather have Trump as his VP. Okay, I'd rather okay. have Trump as his VP than Kamala Harris. Got you. So you're right so, now. He's got to get rid of Harris, man. So you're like that Batman guy, Two Face, right now. Is that that's what's going no, on? No, 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 no. They're, they're they're very similar. They're fundamentally uh, yeah. both. Kevin, how much is Jack? This is absolutely insane. Very similar. Very They're both progressive minded people. They're both for the self reliance of the American. Alphas could share the platform. Trump's bravest soldier has now said conservatism is cringe and that Trump is the same as Biden. So enjoy your comrade. Boys. Yeah, well, I'm not a conservative. Jeff, I'm a progressive Jeff, nationalist, dude. Okay. Jeff, well, Jeff, he even said, Jeff, he even said, Jeff, he even said, he even said it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what crime Trump goes to jail for, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. If Trump goes, if Trump goes to jail for it, I'm just stating the reality. I let you talk the entire time. If Trump goes to jail for an insurrection related charge, the 14th amendment is directly implied. If he goes to jail for an a, a insurrection-related charge, then he is disqualified for running for office. Point yeah, blank. It's a There's no questions yeah, about that. It's a that. political thing, right? It's a no, political it's thing, too. He, 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 he says that they he did this and he's been found ten. guilty of it, then he is not allowed to run for office. He's not eligible yeah, for but, office. Yeah, but he then you look, at, you look at his opponents. You look at his opponents. You look at Clintons, for example. So Guess what? They weren't even they weren't even prosecuted. You know why? Because it's a fundamentally political prosecution, even hey, if he's proud. guilty. Was the reason why. Yeah, no? the reason okay. why the reason why I say it's political isn't even a statement about guilt or innocence. I think I think you would have to make a really good case that he personally did the insurrection there. I think you could make you maybe an argue he personally did the no, 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 but what I'm saying Osama is just the, didn't fact, personally just the fact that United it's States. him. Just the fact that it's him and none of the establishment figures that they're investigating goes to show that even if he's guilty, that doesn't change the fact that the system is still Ooh. set out against outsiders and reformists. And the fact okay, of the matter so is it's kind of a miracle. agree that it would be it's funny if he went to jail? That Joe Biden managed to become... The, uh, okay. the Democrat. You've got like 10 minute um, talking points, okay. and I would love Kevin, for you to be the only person that talks, but Kevin, there's other people here. So, I do have to ask you. Um, so there is, there is, there is this, right? So you, you stated that it, it doesn't matter if Trump goes to jail for an insurrection related charge because they'd have to prove that it's him. So underneath that logic, you would then, then Osama bin Laden would be innocent of attacking the United States because he personally didn't attack the United States. He just sent people to do it. Like no, you, you, you would have you would have to no. be <laughs> with that. Yes. No. Yes. No, what this he's is crazy. Saying is what You're missing Trump's the point of my argument. My is argument is that Trump's voters innocent? don't okay. care whatever you find him guilty of. They don't care. And they're still gonna go out and vote for him. Is Actually, what I, mean. I would agree with you. Trump's Trump's voters do not care about the constitution. I think that's been proven. Okay, I well, would the agree with you on that. Yeah, but the Constitution is aloof to the struggles of the masses, dude. Your Constitution's largely problematic. I mean, you've had to amend it, like, what? However many dozen times already. That's so, a feature, not a bug. So, so stop, you can uh, amend it. So that a reminder to everyone. Wait, stop uh, stopping uh, the uh, portraits of the polls. I'm asking. For anyone that's confused, Kevin is Canadian, so he's a little slow when it comes to our Constitution. You need to respect that. Wait, okay. no, oh my god, lecture fan. I saw you were shaking your head when, when you were hearing Sprout talk. Could you do you want to oh, express a just, disagreement with that? Well, there, there's just there's just tons of obviously uninformed and ignorant people talking about things they really haven't looked into and really haven't researched here. And so I've just kind of been sitting here, uh, listening to the nonsense. Uh, I don't know who the, the guy in the Steelers hat is that said Trump violated the Constitution. I'd, I'd ask him, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Sure, let me answer that. So, what provision um, of the Constitution and how and what court found? By the way, Trump has so, never been charged with an insurrection. The, sure, Just throw sure. that out there. Let me, let me, yeah, let me we, we really got to get on that. The 14th, Amendment, 
Yeah, the Fourteenth Amendment, Section Three, says anybody who is engaged in insurrection or provided oh, okay. aid or comfort. Okay. Or, yeah, hold on, stop, true. stop, stop. Or provided aid or comfort is ineligible to serve as an officer of the United States, and it does not require a criminal conviction, just like impeachment doesn't require a criminal conviction. The Supreme Court could tomorrow say Congress gets to decide, and Congress could get to decide. I agree, the Supreme Court should clarify exactly by what means he could be ruled ineligible. But I agree, in essence, that he did give aid and comfort or okay. engage I thought, I thought in you were an insurrection. About something else. I, th- I thought you were talking about something else. If you're actually saying he engaged in a, in insurrection, that's laughable. All right, got it. No, I mean, is it laughable? I don't, like, because I don't think I don't think it's wait, necessarily. Wait, can laughable. I can I can I can I ask you, lecture fan? Why is why is it laughable? God damn it. Okay. Because because it's absurd. Because challenging an election result is not an insurrection. Donald Trump had a legal theory about what Mike Pence could do under the Electoral Count Act and under the Constitution. Uh, again, that's not an instruction. If if simply burglars have a legal electors, theory on what they can do to your house, separate at 2 electors or objecting to electors or doing. Don't then like then like lots of Democrats would Lecture be guilty fan. of that I'm too. Finished. I mean, I we could go. I could go on and on. There, sure. There's a whole is, bunch of different is reasons. Is purposefully interrupting a legal process that, if delayed or or interrupted like completely and not able to happen, would violate multiple state and federal laws in terms no, of the in regard to the peaceful transfer of power? Is that not an insurrection? Purposefully no, delaying or. Um, no, the other, here's, stop I mean, here, the here's the other here's the other thing that you you know nothing yeah, after what by the way after lecture comp- fan we're gonna have yeah, joe yeah. lewis he's been waiting okay hell yeah there, there's there's something there's something called united states supreme court precedent about how to interpret constitutional provisions sure and one of those says what you do is you actually look to the original intent of the drafters and the original intent mm-hmm. of the drafters of the 14th amendment was to prohibit people that had t- that had served in the u.s government and taken an oath to uphold the constitution and then fought for the confederacy in the civil war and so I mean, when you actually when you actually go to interpret a, a provision like that, and I know you don't know this, so let me explain. No, it to you. I do. So when you go to when you go to interpret a provision like that that says insurrection or rebellion, you go back in history to what the original drafters meant, and what they meant was something akin to the Civil War. And so by you saying that that what Donald Trump did on January sixth, by telling people to peacefully protest and then making constitutional and statutory legal arguments under the Constitution and the Electoral Count Act about the vice president's power, sure. you're basically saying that's that's the same thing and that's on par with the American. No, Civil so War, you're saying. Is- They've never, hold on, hold on, let me finish, hold on, let me finish, hold on, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish never my point, wait, wait, shut up, dude, let me finish my point, we gotta stop, we gotta stop, we gotta stop, we gotta stop, wait, stop, everybody, but we, can you guys give me, give me a second, okay, we only have a few more minutes left, so lecture fan, finish your point, you got like 15 seconds, but you gotta make it quick, then we have to have Jeb Tan respond very quickly, 10, 15 seconds, then we're gonna go to Joe, because Joe's been waiting, we gotta get through this quick, and I think Pixel, have you been waiting to say something too? No? Okay, then we'll go that, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Okay. Go go ahead. It's it's just classic for for liberals and leftists to interrupt me like that because they can't what? handle the truth. Leftist. Was that me? I I was yeah. just no, trying the to guy give you the Steelers okay. hat. That's whoever it. that okay. leftist is. Uh, I'm not a leftist. I'm actually a conservative, and so I want someone who doesn't, doesn't you know, sound like the it, man. Doesn't, doesn't sound yeah, like it. Yeah, and this is and this is what I'm trying to point out. So you're saying the Fourteenth Amendment has never been invoked in times other than this uh, other than the Civil War. It had to rise to another civil war. Or has it been used since in cases where not very many people died and the, they just committed a rebellion against the United States the in a limited sense? Has, the, the instruction clause has never been used to disqualify somebody from the ballot. Yeah, it hasn't been used to disqualify exactly somebody accurate. from the ballot. We used to, we ballot, used to build yeah. things in this country. We used to do new things in this country. Now it's all, oh, we can't do this. Oh, we can't do that. If we can, if we can get Trump on this, you know what? Sorry. I say we can. Why do you doubt America? But my fan. base point here is your okay, idea. Wrap it up, that though. It, we gotta go to the joke. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Your what's idea the that it can only be, Trump Your idea that it can only be used in literally the Civil War, lecture fan, is the same logic oh, that so progressive. No, lecture fan. So I think is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, finish. We don't have any finish. time. You gave up your time, dude. Is the same logic progressives have been using to say that the Second They're Amendment only protects muskets. We say that if the Constitution leaves something vague, you need to assume that it is protected, not that it isn't, or is included, not that it isn't. So when the officers of the United States are included, or insurrection or rebellion is included in the language, and they don't specify it needs to be as bad as the Civil War, then we need to assume that it includes things that aren't as bad as the Civil War, not that it excludes things, just like we need to assume that the Second Amendment includes AR-15s and doesn't exclude them, because we assume that the Constitution is broad, not narrow in its protections. You don't know what you're talking about, but all right. Okay, uh, sure. Joe Lewis, uh, wrap us up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say if we bar Jefferson Davis, we should probably bar Donald Trump. But I think that's the argument for the lawyers to make in this case. 
right? Like, I kind of agree with what your fans kind of saying a little bit, but I do think that, again, and Deb agrees with this too, that it should probably be clarified by the Supreme Court so they can kind of squash this in the bud. I think it's a beholden of Republicans to bring forth that argument, though. I think they should advocate for the Supreme Court it's a matter of like clarifying that's a social and it's a social and political institution. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. I mean, this should be clarified. Okay. But again, also, too, I just, I just want to say, got... I just want to say, fuck Jimmy Carter, that piece of shit cuck, for actually pardoning that nigga. It's crazy to think that Jimmy Carter pardoned Jefferson Davis. It's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, he was a Joe, nice look, guy. This is my Joe Lewis haircut. My Joe Lewis haircut. You like this? Oh, wow. Um, oh, it's too oh, white oh, for oh, me. I'm sorry. God. Oh, I'm like looking at the I'm screen. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. wait. It's an Quiet Alex down, moment. Everyone. Is it gooning or racism? Wait, I'm I'm not looking at the screen. Is it gooning Reaper, or racism? The Reaper calls. The Reaper calls. Um, I don't know. I didn't take my DEI pills today, so it's hard I to have tell. the people that were kicking. Uh, oh, all decided. Go. Kick me. Are you kicking oh, me? I have to. Yeah, go. you're on the list, actually, Stein. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I can you show you the list. You want to see the list? Well, first of all, you're lucky to have me. I'm the pimp on a blimp. Everybody needs to watch my Blaze TV show on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, it's always a blast. I hope we do this more. Uh, you know, if I didn't have such a busy schedule, because, you know, oftentimes I'm about to go on the campaign trail with Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm about to go on Tim Pool January 8th. I'm, you're campaigning uh, with Vivek? Yes, I am in Iowa. Oh, and so, damn. No room yeah, on the Trump so, campaign, I guess. <laughs> Well, actually, I just was the keynote speaker and MC at the New York Young Republicans Club where Trump was the, uh, you know, whatever, the person of honor. So I was just with Trump. I love Trump, but I mean, I'm going to go help my boy Vivek. He's a 9-11 truther like me. So uh, him and I are vibing on a lot of different levels. But that's neither here nor there. I just want to say thank you. I'm on the rise. I'm the pip on a blimp. Bosh, I know you brought up Lolly a bunch. That's kind of a weird deal, but I'm going to let you just do you. Uh, because, right, you get know, you get do back you, to your everybody. second monitor and whatever you have on there, man. Go for it. And, well, I'm no about to go eat some you. Chinese food. But I just want to say I love you all, Joe Lewis. I think you got the most swag on the panel. I hope you stay all night. Uh, the guy at the Hello, bottom. Bro. I actually like your autism, and I am the creep in the Jeep <laughs> Cherokee with the Bow system, 22-inch rims. I love Jeep. It's a great car brand. It's been one of the best, most popular car brands. So if I'm the creep in the Jeep, as long as I'm getting some dome, you know, I'm causing pain in the turning lane. That's just how I am on the pimp on a blimp. So I love you guys. This has been a pleasure, and uh, I'll speak to you again very soon, I'm sure, Dylan. And stay safe. You're in Maryland. You're not in uh, Ukraine yeah, anymore. Yeah, I, I got back for a bit. I'm going to be here for a few months. I think Baltimore is more dangerous than the Ukraine. All right, I love I'm you guys. Baltimore uh, tomorrow, actually. <laughs> Damn, this man. Yeah. Really Bring your bulletproof like, vest. Oh, man. We <laughs> fine. Oh man. See you later, man. You have a good one. Peace. Uh, next is Kevin, man. Sorry, people yeah. didn't. Did, people didn't. They didn't the vibe fuck? with your Marxism. Uh, I mean, your uh, Bidenism, Trumpism. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, they'll come around in time. So let's uphold uh, mega Bidenism. Institutionalism <laughs> is aloof to the struggles of the masses. And go follow me over on X at Kevin Gasly, YouTube Superpower Broadcasting, and Twitch Superpower Broadcasting. Peace. Okay, Sprout, you were thrown out. I'm very sorry, my good Damn, friend. What the fuck? You, you, you are the you are old soul hippy dippy, and I'm happy that you came here, and I'm really uh, happy I got to get you on. Oh, you're good. Uh, feels like a cheap shot. Um, I don't know if it's the same judges as last time, but you know, uh, someone no, has my the name. DNC, has, the DNC, the DNC, I mean, the Dylan Burns TV shoot, uh, judge system is very fair. I can assure you. Okay. Well, as long as long as the system says the system is fair, I think that's yes. I think that's what I think that's a uh, beneficial. You. Um, but no, I appreciate you. Appreciate the invite. Uh, look forward to the next conversation. Uh, I apologize to chat. Uh, this conversation was kind of short. Um, but yeah, look forward to next time. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, I tell you, our judge system is great. Our judge system is fantastic. It's wonderful. Oh, also, uh, before I, I kick the last two people, somebody donated twenty five dollars, and as we, as everybody knows now, I take money to ask people questions because I exploit my guests viciously. Uh, what do you guys think of the new Argentinian president? That was a question. A thumbs up or a thumbs down He's from awesome. the crowd? You like He's him, awesome. lecture fan? Oh, love didn't it. Didn't that nigga backpedal on like half the shit he advocated for? I'm very excited he... to see what happens is all I'll say. Yeah, I'm, is, I'm, I'm enthused about him. I, I lean toward liking him. I just want to make sure he, like Joe Lewis said, I want to make sure he 
does things before yeah, I, I agree. Say I love Considering them. libertarianism isn't a real ideology, it will be very fun to get an actual real life example of everything immediately crumbling to dust the moment one of them gets their hands on power, which has already what started. I, what does God say? What did, what does does God say? Have bears? Hmm? Well, huh? Vosh, Vosh, all of the South Americans are fleeing the socialist governments. You realize that, right? Look at Venezuela. They're all trying to flee because that's what happens with socialism. Yeah, and people are pouring into Argentina right now. That's true. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. I actually feel really bad. I have like, well, I have fans everywhere, but Argentina fans or whatever. And I feel like, I, I feel like, I, I feel like their chat messages are like the last gasps of a man drowning as his face bubbles above water for a second. It's, it's pretty rough out there. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's a, that's a dreary image. Uh, sorry for the last two, Joe and Pixel. I'm very sorry. You have been, you've been booted out by our, by our, our oh, no. democracy. That's all good. Hey, listen. That's if you so replace sad. me, I was listen, I'm just gonna say this, Dylan. Okay. Man. If you replace me with an Asian person, I'm gonna be really pissed at you. Okay. I'm gonna it's Kenny Zhu. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not God Kenny. Damn. It's not Kenny. He's running for Congress now, actually. Really? I know. Oh wait. Which yeah, is. Which uh, state? Kenny Zhu was. Uh, I, there's. I, I only know one way to explain to people who he is, and I don't know if I want to bring That's it up. That's the white guy, right? <laughs> yeah. The, it's the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's the white guy. Yeah. 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 You get it. <laughs> See, everybody's been saying it except me. I just want to say I've been dodging the allegations very well for two years, okay? Yeah, well, yeah, I but, like this uh, continues white, on so a lot after this panel, Dylan, because you listening like it? to men... Oh, yeah, listening to men talk over each other because of ever, very specific need of mine. Ever, so like, I can't ever tell if, if Pixel has a good time on my show or not. I do. I have a, I have a wonderful time. Yeah, it's absolutely That's great. Good. And, um, yeah, I hope it keeps going because, yeah, it's great. Thank you. So you like you like the one off? You like the the comeback? You want it more? I mean, I I, I mean for sure I want it more, and it would be mm -hmm. really good to actually like you know get to say a few more things on it. We should have we should have this rumble, except with just women. I know it would just be Stardust and Pixel talking, does, but I think it's very. Yeah, a just woman's, a woman's any more women? <laughs> well, actually, no. How about this? You you try to see how much money you can throw at Aristocracy's Patreon till she shows her face. I think you should do that. All right. She did a face reveal and she's cocking her whole audience. Wait, she is did she, a face reveal? She did a she face reveal. Through, but I think it's a good opportunity to use your platform. Okay, okay, we got a schedule. We got a schedule. We're talking about aristocracy face reveals now. Okay, come on. I just want to see Zionists show their fascist face. That's all. All right, I'm going to go Let now. Let me out of here. Uh, Bye. On the way out. The, the, Let me out. It's on the punches on the way out. Okay, Danabo, bring in the new people. Bring in the. Bring in the new wave of fresh meat. Wait, before we but before we do that, you three, did you expect to get to this point? We're we're getting close to the to the finals now. Jebtan, you're probably the underdog underdog here. I'm I'm surprised you got through last round. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Electro fan. You've surprised. been you've been holding in since the start too. I always since the very start. I Dude, I was going glad all the way back to Raj Royale. Yeah, I was glad that it wasn't about the war on Christmas still by the time I came in. That's the one I thought I wasn't <laughs> going to survive because I could not give less of a f about a war on Christmas. A and Vosh, can you believe you made this far as an up-and-coming streamer? Um, yeah, with, uh, with the shirt that I'm wearing now, it was never a surprise to me. Um, I, I came in with the Pearl Snap. Yeah, I knew I was here for, uh, for, uh, for the whole time. Fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. Turk, old soul of the show for the conservative side. He was our regular, you know, in every in every wrestling car, there are the people who go out and do the matches and keep the industry up. Uh, Turk was one of them, and I appreciate that greatly. Counterpoints, another one of them, and somebody who respects the panel game very much. Very happy to have him on here, and I liked his hippy-dippy uh, uh, shoot off series. I don't know if anybody saw those, but he did a shoot off hippy dippy independent independent version of it, almost like a like what what, what would you call it? Uh, uh, what would you call it? Offshoot copyright and infringement. Offshoot, that's yeah, what I would call it. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. I didn't think about. It. Hey, Pisco, we should talk later. We got some, com <laughs> we got some conversation. Yeah, sure, to do. sure. And of course, I haven't talked to James in forever. We got James on the show. James from the internet. Happy to have you on again. We haven't talked in forever. Happy to have you on. Mellow greetings, Dylan. I hope you are well. Thank you. Would be a thing. Yeah. Um, I just want to, because everybody heard earlier, uh, I was very sad to see that Alex Stein once again fleed uh, from me. And I'm very sad that I didn't get to ask him what Marjorie Taylor Greene tastes like. So I'm pretty sad going into this part of the uh, debate now. But I'm going to try to pull it together for you and give you a. Yeah, Dylan, you I need, did, you need more fat ass rumors. Latinas uh, next time to, to keep him in the, the whole while. I, he'll keep Vivek waiting if you like have the right bait laid out. 
Dude, and they, we, are the, they are a match made in hell, those two. I love that Alex Stein attached himself to the worst performing GOP presidential candidate. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw. Uh, Vivek just like a few days ago, he announced he is canceling all ads in Iowa in New Hampshire. Oh, no yeah, shit. Oh, I didn't see that. He heard Alex Stein was advertising on his behalf, so he knew he didn't need any commercials. <laughs> okay, I arrived. Right. Happy to have... Wait, 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 let me finish quick. Vivek, I'm sorry. No, I hate to Vivek. do that. Vivek? IRI, IRI. Vivek. Happy to have you with this campaign before you know how to pronounce it. Happy to have you, IRI. Yes, yes. Glad to be here. Yes. Okay, so um, we're going to continue with the topic. Who wants to pick us up? Uh, Pisco, I know that you think about legal things every once in a oh, while. Oh, yeah. So do you have any thoughts on the topic of Trump's uh, Colorado absolutely. Uh, removal? Yeah, so I think that the opinion by the Colorado Supreme Court was absolutely well executed and correct on the law and correct on app application of the facts. Um, and I think that we should all agree that regardless of how uncomfortable it makes us, we need to enforce the Constitution. If the Constitution requires that Trump is disqualified, we have to follow that. And so the arguments about, you know, is it prudent? Um, will, it, will it lead to bad results? Will it lead to good results? Those are almost not relevant, right? We would never say that of the Second Amendment. We would never say, will it lead to good results or bad results if we protect the individual right to to have firearms and the same thing for the first amendment or any other provision of the constitution that's mandatory the only question should be does the law require it and so i'm sure lecture fan will have a lot of reasons why he disagrees about what section three means but we shouldn't be sort of tied down in these arguments about outcomes and is it good for the country is it good for the democrats because those in my opinion are totally irrelevant well, I, I like what you say here, Pisco, because you're actually wanting us to follow through the law and go through the proper process, as opposed to, Jeb, you have no room to talk here, dude. You're saying we just need to go for it, They're, you know, have the risk and just throw them out, dude. We well, are a nation of the laws. Supreme Court needs uh, no. to clarify a process for disqualifying. I didn't hear. I didn't hear him say that. He and did I, and say it, and I mentioned it in the chat, dude. You totally wanted us to risk it as Republicans and not follow the letter of the law and go through the due process, dude. What so do you Jack, mean? I said you're talking Supreme out of both Court sides of your mouth, to, man. I said the Supreme Court needs to clarify the method for disqualifying him and the method no, for and determining. No, and then you said as Republicans, we need to just risk it and go for it. No, no, you go what? all in or all out. That's what you were saying earlier. No, I was not the one mode? saying it's all or nothing. No, that was the two dudes here and here that were saying it's all or nothing. I was saying the Supreme Court needs to clarify how they're determining he committed insurrection. And if he did, the Supreme Court needs to uphold the fact that he's not eligible to be president. Turk, just to tell us, I, I've heard him. Go ahead. Sorry, lecture fan. No, I was just going to say, it, it's literally not the job of the Supreme Court to do that. What the what the 14th Amendment says is that Congress has the power to implement that provision. It's not up to the Supreme sure. It's certainly not up to the state Supreme Court. How how preposterous is it to think that, let's say it's 1870, and you're going to ask wait. the Alabama, you're going to ask the Alabama Supreme Court to make a decision about whether somebody's qualified for the, how stupid. They it's never not stupid. Oh, wait, this sure. be done no, by they, the they have court. to. It's what not do you mean? The, the they're, they're in charge of Hold their on, can you guys shut up for a second? Let, can you shut up for a second? Let them finish. Can they shut up and let me finish? Okay. It, it, it's it's literally the dumbest idea ever to think that the, the, the drafters of the 14th wanted the Alabama Supreme Court to make a decision on insurrectionists in 1870s, which is why they put in there that it's Congress has the the power to implement that legislation, which they have not done there. If Congress wanted to, they could have set forth an entire framework for how you can you, you criminally convict somebody of an insurrection. They get a jury trial. They get full due process. They can be sentenced. They can be removed from the ballot after that type of process. Congress hasn't done that. And the idea that you just let any random Supreme Court or any random, you know, unitary, solitary secretary of state is is op preposterous. <laughs> Lex Fan is just dead wrong on the law. All right. So wow. every right. state He's state. Courts, state courts in the states are assumed to be capable of enforcing federal law. That is black letter law. And in this particular amendment, the Fortune Amendment, there are other provisions of it which no one disputes, notwithstanding uh, the, the, the fifth section of, of the Fortune Amendment, which gives a permit grant of authority for Congress, no one disputes the fitness of the state courts to enforce the Equal Protection Clause. To enforce the due yes, process they, clause, hold, to enforce, on, but no, Pisco, they do not. No, no, they they, they do, do not. Uh, Their equal they, protection they, clause they, heard in state courts all the time. You're talking about it, the it, principle, just, not the application. No, 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 no. I'm talking about state courts enforcing constitutional provisions. Lecture fan will support me on this particular thing because he knows state courts enforce the equal protection clause. He knows that state courts enforce. If they had to, they would be able to enforce the Thirteenth Amendment banning slavery. No one sits here and thinks that all you know Congress needed to pass a law in order to have slavery uh, the, the 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 
abolition of slavery be affected. The 13th Amendment also gives a permissive grant of additional authority for Congress to enact legislation pursuant so to the go. 13th Amendment. But so the, the 13th I Amendment, I just want to finish this. The 13th uh, Amendment is self-executing, and everyone understood it to be at the time. Lecture fans point about it. It's so ridiculous that these they could have thought that state courts enforce this. It's not ridiculous at all. It's an assumed part of the structure of our government. None of the federal courts are assumed uh, to be in existence. They're all a, a, a matter of grace of Congress. And uh, what's more is, as a, just a matter of practicality, uh, Republicans were implemented in a lot of these positions uh, by the by the conquering armies of the Union. And so just as a matter of practical practicality in the immediate aftermath, that's that's what occurred. In lecture fans defense, okay, so, he isn't so, American, so he might not know a lot of this. OK, so <laughs> what I want to hear you say is that the a state a state court, which I heard you say they're just as good as federal courts. They interpret federal law all the time. They interpret the court they constitution do. all the time. OK, so they should make a determination about whether or not Donald Trump committed the act of insurrection in a jurist, a crime in a jurisdiction in not which they don't have insurrection isn't a crime. It absolutely as the is a crime. so one hundred percent a crime. They don't have to determine. I, I mean, uh, so, not so, in regard so, to the Fourteenth so, Amendment. Let, let's be clear. It's almost I mean, like they should go through a jury trial and actually right. determine if it was. So this is right. not or so, even an impeachment by Congress, which they failed to do after is the election. It, it, Trump is a high acquitted. crime and wait, let's be clear. Is a high Trump crime and misdemeanor? Acquitted. Is a high crime and misdemeanor under the impeachment clause of the Constitution? Is that a crime? Sorry. So no. Say it again, just so I can so, answer it honestly. So, as you're aware. The impeachment clause of the Constitution specifies certain things that are that make one uh, liable for the impeachment process, and that is high crimes and misdemeanors. It says high crimes and misdemeanors. When you go through an impeachment process, is that a criminal process? No, no it's not. It's point. a political okay. process. In this particular case, the, just like in with fraud, there's civil point. fraud, point there's is criminal that, fraud. Is they, these concepts have different meanings in different contexts. That threshold. My point they, is they haven't even they hit that have, threshold. Okay, so so first you're just uh, just right now, and I don't know if you want to do this. You are right no. now currently um, saying and agreeing with me that criminal process is not required. So can we all agree on that? The criminal process is not no. required. No, okay, so cannot. that's okay. So. I want some textual saying, basis to support the contention that this is a criminal process. The penalty here is disqualification. It's not incarceration. It's not a criminal fine. It's disqualification. What textual anything do you have to support the notion that this is a criminal sanction? Yeah, when you say so the insurrection, the... that's a crime. The, the insurrection was a crime then, and it, and it is now. Look in Title 18 of the U.S. Wait, Code. Wait, 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 yeah, in, in those dead. titles, there are punishments listed with the things that are being said. So, yes, these this is Congress cannot stuff. Congress cannot pass a criminal statute and change what the, the Constitution says. You guys really the think there's you anything have, you can the say that will make lecture fans there. not be wrong on this? Uh, well, yeah. I, I just want to be clear. Not that so, let's so Congress could. Con con Congress wait, could. Wait, 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 okay. Whoever. So, and, let's, and literally let's, every let's, court wait, wait, that's looked at it has agreed with me, besides wait, Colorado, by the way. We're 35 and Wait, no, no, no. That, that, that is not true. That's, Stop, yeah, I no. want to make sure everybody gets a chance to talk. Does anybody in particular want to talk? I just want to make a list, make sure I know who wants to. Uh, yeah, okay. I have one thing to say, and that's all so, I have to say. Everybody. Okay, one second. Keep your hand up until I tell you to put them down. So I write them all down. Jeez. Good job, Connor. Okay, you guys can put them down. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, letting Pisco finish his point. Then I'm gonna go down the list. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, so it, Congress can't retroactively change the Constitution by passing an insurrection statute that criminalizes insurrection. Uh, it's totally in harmony with Section Three, as understood by the Colorado Supreme Court. Uh, Section Three disqualifies for someone who engages in insurrection, and the the particular part of Title Eighteen that you're referencing criminalizes that conduct. It's absurd to think that what the framers of Section Three intended was for every single person who engaged in insurrection uh, in the South to have gone through a criminal trial. That's not what was intended. They couldn't have wanted to flood. And, and who was going to do it? Federal courts? That totally cut, get, uh, sort of undermines your point on that, that Congress has to do it. You wanted Congress to, to get federal courts involved in all of these criminal procedures? It's absurd, and there's no textual basis. The reason why people are arguing that this is required is because it's outcome-driven, because they don't want Trump to be disqualified, even though that's what the Constitution requires. Okay. Turk? Yeah, so code 1851, let me get the numbers for you, 1512, tampering with a witness, blah, 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 
Subsection C, whoever corruptly, section two, otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding or attempts to do so shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. So there is already a criminal statute in place in U.S. code. Now we need to go through Doesn't the matter. legal process of actually executing that and finding him either guilty or not guilty of the crime and then executing on that. As it goes to the scope of section three, you'll notice that there's certain titles and types of people that are listed in it. It's not everyone under the sun that does this thing that is uh, a, a, applicable to section three. It's the people in section three. So what you just said about the courts would be plugged up is not the case. Are you going to offer, okay. the, are you going to argue that the president's not an officer of the United States or the presidency is an officer under the United States or the presidency doesn't, president That's doesn't swear an oath to support the Constitution? That's something that should actually be litigated and should be I, just talked the about. The Supreme Court may overturn the Colorado Supreme Court. You can go to the bank. They are not going to rule that the president isn't an officer of the United States. You can take it to the bank. I've, I've seen they the were, reports and that should life. be something that should be argued and tried on Absolutely. both sides. Yeah, okay. because because the because the constitutional amendment is very it was it lists, in the it lists out Supreme senators Court. and representatives. It doesn't list out. It lists them out because there was a meeting. Wait, 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 we we have a list. Officer. I want to go. I want to go to Jeb. Jeb has been waiting very patiently. I want to go down the list. Yeah. So anyway, I'll do one thing and then logic. Test. Also, so chat. Whole, Ten minutes left. If you want to donate for a question, now would be the time. Continue, Jeb. Yeah. So the idea that it requires a criminal conviction that Turk was saying and reading off that code, it's bullshit. That code, that criminal code was passed in 1982. The 17th or the 14th Amendment was passed far before that. So it wasn't a crime at the time. So obviously they it's were not going to require a, crime a criminal in a conviction. Code. Sure. In 1982. This you can't change the Constitution on yet, something that passed, was passed exactly. afterwards. Exactly. Yes, no, it, was it was a crime before afterwards. then, too. Okay, but not. this particular right. incarnation right. is a modern right. version of that. Now, two very quick logic tests. The first one, this idea that the state Supreme Courts just have no, just like shouldn't have any business litigating this. I hard disagree. Obviously, we That's want them to be able man. to do this. And here's the law. And here's the logic as to why the state Supreme Court should rule on this and should be able to remove someone from the primary ballot. Say Trump wins in Colorado, and then he is found by the Supreme Court or by Congress to be ineligible. We don't have a process in place for finding who the next best candidate or who the Republican candidate is going to be. So obviously, you want state Supreme Courts to be able to make a proactive ruling where Congress has failed to, which they did. They took it to a trial. They had a discovery process. They had Trump's lawyers defend them. They did argue the idea that you're talking about with the officers of the United States that should be litigated. It was, and it failed to meet the standard of the Colorado. Colorado Supreme Court, and so they removed him from is the he, primary is ballot. He off the ballot now to protect. No, now no, they, they stayed they their own him. order. Yes. Oh, it's so almost it's, like it's in the process of litigation. Yeah, but yeah, they're, they're they acknowledging also, that they want the Supreme Court to weigh in on this, but you're exactly, the ones saying Supreme which, Court shouldn't even weigh in on this. That's exactly, not what which, I said. That's what I lecture fans do. said. And one sec. So again, for the second logic test, let's. Okay, but the after logic. the second logic test, we yes, got to go back down the list. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, second logic test. How much does it make sense that the president wouldn't be included in officers of the United States and that this idea that it needs to be a criminal conviction in order to be found guilty of engaging in insurrection in terms of the 14th Amendment when you're exempting the guy who can pardon the federal charge of insurrection for all of his friends who committed it with him. So you're right. basically That's handing this person who committed insurrection the power to overturn all the criminal convictions and thereby make sure nobody who committed insurrection with him ever is disqualified from any form of office. And it Congress is the only one who's... No, 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 no. James? Um, well, sitting here trying to argue the Constitution with a lawyer and then a whole room of people who aren't lawyers but read the Constitution, who I'm assuming six weeks ago were experts right. on, you know, how, how women get pregnant. And 12 weeks ago, they were experts on Sharia law. And six months ago, sure. they were experts on, on you know, uh, is breaking a window at the U.S. Capitol building a federal offense. Uh, the bottom line is... Uh, what happened in Maine, what happened in Colorado, what may or may not happen in other states. Um, it, it's pointless other than if you want to be a legal political wonk and discuss placing mechanisms like this into the system in case a future event happens, because at the end of the day, all these state proceedings, all they're doing is, is they're attempting to take Trump off the ballot for the primary, which he's going to win by like 68% anyway. And the states that took him off the ballot the RNC can just fast track their own rule changes in their own rules committee and change it to a caucus or, or a rock throwing contest. Like it's irrelevant either way. Donald Trump's going to end up on the primary, regardless of if it's three states, five states or seven states that try to remove him. And the Supreme Court's going to be the ultimate decider on this anyway. So it's literally irrelevant. OK, next is going to be Connor. 
Okay. So you asked me what I would think would be the thing impeding the process of removing Trump from the ballot. I would say due process. You're saying that the state of Colorado walked through this entire thing. They had Trump's lawyers there, et cetera, et cetera. I'm saying that they're investigating something that they don't have jurisdiction or holding or whatever the fuck it is in order to go ahead and take a look at. So that's kind of bullshit off of the gate. Second, the other one was a hearing from a Democrat state attorney in a different state, like I think it was Maine, where you had a single point of contact who was able to remove that person from the ballot. Is that the kind of precedent that we want to set where we say, so for instance, we could do this to all the BLM people. Like, like as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and find a bunch of state level people who pro- who went into BLM protests. Let's say that this was a de facto level of insurrection. Uh, it doesn't require a criminal trial. It doesn't require a civil trial. We think that they're in contempt of the government of the United States in violation of their previous oaths. Therefore, they're prohibited from taking state office. Let's go ahead and set this precedent. Seems like a beautiful road to walk down. No, no. Now, the- here's oh, the hold on. Peace. Go. I, no. I would like to finish. I'll be happy to hear you you get it or address it in a second. So I said that he hasn't been convicted of a crime. You said that he doesn't need to meet that threshold. Then we talked about the impeachment process. I'll concede that that's not a criminal process either. But my whole point there is that he hasn't even been through a civil process yet to establish the fact that he did an insurrection. By the way, real quick, I think that Donald Trump has a lot to lose in that civil and criminal process. I think he could be convicted or could be found guilty of insurrection. What I'm saying is you need to go through that process first. And by the way, the only time that this law has ever been invoked was against a socialist who was convicted of previous crimes and who was voted by a greater than two thirds margin in Congress for his seat to be vacated. That is the only previous time that this part of the Constitution has ever been used. And now you're trying to use it against the former president of the United States in a way that's way more loose. Uh, this is not true on the facts of the history you just cited. The Section 3 has been invoked more than Hold once on, in our history. Don't you need to go to IRI um, here? Don't you need to go to IRI here? OK. Because um, I got shut down last time I tried to talk. Um, I, I, just get I wasn't trying to do an unfair system. I just wanted to give him an opportunity to respond to that. I, I just, I'll, I'll be well, happy. Well, I'll be happy to hear the other times that section three was invoked. Yeah. So in invoked 2020, directly uh, after the civil war, well, listen, listen, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to, to the, the, but the, nobody the was barred from Congress as a result because well, they passed legislation to allow them to go and seek office. Okay. Oh, we have, oh. we have three minutes left. So I guess we'll, if, if we're diverting to me, then I'm just going to keep going uh, oh. and I'm going to throw it over to IRI. Well, actually eight people have been disqualified due to that and none of them were charged with it, the crime of insurrection. So I guess lecture fan, you would have an issue with all eight of those people being uh, disqualified. And also you mentioned that Congress should be the one who determines if someone is disqualified, but then why do they have the waiver rule there that they get to overturn it? So are they going to overturn themselves? I, I don't know. I must have missed that if you discussed no, Congress, that earlier. No, Congress. Congress isn't the one that gets to decide in an individual case whether somebody's uh, c- cannot be on the ballot. What Congress is supposed to do is do implementing legislation, which is typically what you see when you have an amendment like this that has a provision and then it'll say Congress can implement this. If they want, can't Congress hasn't done it. And the issue of, oh, some some other, you know, clearly, obviously, like Confederates, the Confederate people that fought for the Confederate army. Oh, they were. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't allowed on the ballot. It's like, OK, obviously the whole thing about the but they weren't charged. Was, was, was it lawful or not? Was it lawful or not? That, that, was that, is there an that, obviousness that, exception for insurrection in Section three? Right. Well, I'm just saying that's one argument of like five or six that totally destroy this, which is why almost every court are we textualist or not? There's no <laughs> looked at this has rejected it. Peace, go give me a second to to talk okay. about Moving this. The goal post. If th- there, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of unanswered questions on this issue, and and you've got oh, there was this has happened one time before, eight times before. Look, there's about five or six major major legal flaws with this. Uh, no congressional implementing legislation doesn't apply to the president. Does the Thirteenth uh, Amendment need implementing legislation? There, there's not at a the not at a state there's this is not supposed to be a state supreme court decision or state secretary's uh state decision for good reason there was nothing uh akin to a civil war that that donald trump did donald trump would never did an insurrection by by telling people that's the marriage you're you're questioning the the jurisdiction here you're questioning the jurisdiction so again there's there's a whole bunch of arguments and and there's a reason that they've all lost. You guys so let's have deal lost with them. almost every time. Well, let's let's deal with them. Color. I just let's listed just, them all off. Okay, so let's talk about them. I was, that was, I was the, trying to respond to Connor, subject. and I'll respond to you as well. You so number one is, what you were doing. So, so Connor said that there's no procedure. A tr- last time I checked, a trial is a civil procedure. You say there's yeah. no procedure. A trial is a procedure. Let's separate in our heads due process and 
uh, jurisdiction. On the due process front, Trump had access to absolutely uh, to, for cross-examination of witnesses. He, if he wanted to, he uh, could have put on whoever witness he wanted. He had expert <clears throat> testimony there. It was a, a trial that lasted a week. Um, he rested early. There's He has never put on the record anyone else he would have deposed or anything else. He just these nebulous ideas about who he, he wants to depose, what, all the FBI and all the people who stoked the actual insurrection on, on the, or like Antifa or something. Uh, that's on the due process front. Plenty of due process here. Election cases are by their necessity faster than other cases. Everyone understands this. In Bush v. Gore, we all understood. It was like a month to decide that case, but no one's here sitting and being like, huh, we're due, due process rights vindicated. Well, in a certain case, you have to speed things up. There's an election coming. And, uh, and yep. Due process recognizes that. On the question of jurisdiction, it's not even close. And I'll ask Lecture Fran just straight up. Does the 13th Amendment require congressional implementing legislation? Yes or no? Uh, I haven't read the 13th Amendment in a while. You haven't read the 13th Amendment? I have not. Uh -oh. I've read uh -oh. the 14th. I've read well, the 14th. I just recently read the 14th Amendment. <laughs> I, it's been a while since I've read the 13th Amendment. Well, well I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. The 13th yeah, Amendment has, has a explicit grant of permissive Congressional, the same language as the as Section Five of the Fourteenth Amendment is in Section Two of the Thirteenth Amendment, which says Congress may, by appropriate legislation, so I fill it in the blanks there. So, if that's not the, what the Fourteenth Amendment says, that the Fourteenth Amendment says Congress has the power to implement this. Procedure. It also it has the same language in Section in the Thirteenth Amendment in the implementing authorization granted to Congress as part of the Thirteenth okay, Amendment. And Congress and Congress yes. implemented it. Okay, so are you saying that if Congress gets rid of the law against slavery, that they could undo the Thirteenth Amendment? No. Of, of course not, because it's self-executing, and we understand it to be, and we understand the other provisions of the 14th Amendment to be self-executing as well. The Equal Protection Clause doesn't require implementing legislation. The Due Process Clause doesn't require implementing legislation. It just is. The Wait, Due Process Clause is what these words mean. Uh, Thank God, thirty-five courts have disagreed with you and, and agreed no, with you. No, no, and you're mischaracterizing the other courts too. Most of the other courts that haven't heard it, like Michigan or Minnesota, right now, uh, uh, or Mi Michigan or Minnesota, th those cases were not decided on the merits. What they said is, yes, we, you know, we can't hear this case because in primary ballots you could nominate a chair, and we have no jurisdiction to review that decision under state procedural law. But that's not been a merits decision about the jurisdiction of states generally to hear it or the merits of what insurrection means or engage in or any of the issues we're talking about now. It's purely a matter of state procedural law uh, for the most part. There's been one or two states that said it's a political question. They're obviously wrong about that. And uh, I, I don't think the Supreme Court's going to say it's a political yeah, question. And, say, and this is the reason They're why. Say the, Supreme Court, say the Supreme Court agrees with Colorado and Trump is an eligible president. The reason why these states need to be able to rule this on their own is so we don't throw a bunch of votes to nominate a candidate that then becomes ineligible. Like you guys have mentioned, if the Supreme Court doesn't agree, we have fail safes. The RNC can go to a caucus. The RNC can put Trump up to win, even if he's not on the primary ballot. We don't have those protective measures if the Supreme Court does agree. We don't have a process if he is ruled ineligible after we nominate him. And so state Supreme Courts need to be able to intervene before that point and allow people a more clear idea of what they have ruled in terms of presidential Look, eligibility. You guys are just so short. Wait, like your fan. So short. Wait, 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 Dylan, this is never wait. going to end. When have you I seen? I know this is never going to yeah. end. Vosh, you are actually the last person on my list that uh, raised his hand to talk. Yeah, it's oh, really look. People say there's the right way, the wrong way to interpret the Constitution. It's this is all bullshit. Okay, the Constitution is terribly written. Many legal documents are. Whether or not you rule one way or the other will be based on your personal bias. I think that a sensible and level-headed uh, assessment of the 14th Amendment would indicate that Colorado's ruling was sensible and fair. Um, conservatives will think otherwise. You know, there's no there's no getting around the fact that the right people are going to think one thing and the wrong people are going to think the other thing. And there's no, like, objective, factual way of saying, well, actually, the constitutional interpretation that the Founding Fathers would have gone with was that, like, that's... So the thing that bothers me here is this like argument from proceduralism. If you're going to argue like, okay, leaving aside whether it's good or bad, is it procedurally correct that he be barred from running? I think that there are many good arguments for saying yes. I think that what Lecture Fan is doing is a very typical conservative tactic where he pretends to care about the procedural when he only actually cares about the outcome. A truly principled study, uh, student of law 
would support outcomes that don't politically favor them because they care about the actual process of the law being uh, litigated. But that's obviously not the environment that we live in. So we're dealing with outcomes first and foremost. And if we're going to talk it's outcomes, we should just talk right. outcomes here. Would it be good or bad for Trump to be barred from running? You know, that earlier was what we were talking about. But this proceduralist stuff, it's not like it matters. You know, it's that not is like a topic for another day. Though. It's not. And to be clear, it's not like people like Thomas or Scalia are being lawyers when they rule on these decisions or, or judges or whatever. It's not like they're taking from their decades of studious examination of the law. This is they have their biases. They have their, don they have their biases. They have their donors. There's a reason why conservative appointed judges consistently rule what conservatives want and the other way around, in fairness. Um, I just, true. this is a, a classic tenet of something that you all need to read up a little bit more on, which is critical race theory. Rejection of the idea that law can be imposed impartially or without bias. There will always be bias in its interpretation and its execution okay. here more than most, I think. OK, so I'm going to let yeah. Connor said he wanted to respond to it. And I know we're supposed to move on. But, you know, out of respect for the fact that Connor did a, a, a shoot off show and he asked my permission to do it and my advice, he gets to respond. I give him special permission. Thank this you. Is a bias system. OK, no, this is this is bullshit. Acting like this is all wit, like words and wind and it doesn't really matter who says what, when, where, why or whatever. This is bullshit as well. The rules that we write down absolutely impact people's lives and not only impact people's lives, social constructions. This is like the lefty thing is just because it's created doesn't mean that it doesn't have impact or objective resonance with some level of reality and whether or not people pretend or try to be as objective as possible is important so when you're saying that everybody in the situation lecture fan me pisco iri yourself we're all just biased towards our own outcomes and all that kind of bullshit what you're saying is that we're just primitive apes who should ignore every single basis of a foundational republic and by the way you might be reading the reason a little bit why... of my statement that wasn't present there we do all act okay, out of well, bias though of course especially when it comes down of to of course we all act out of bias but at the same time like you can't tell me that like you basically say that like oh everybody is biased in a certain direction as a result this doesn't matter which by the way i'm talking your points right back to you i'm not saying Please it doesn't matter to me Okay, so then explain to me how we can make sense of the morass of biases in the situation to arrive at a relatively correct conclusion. Relatively can, correct is the is the sort of name of the game there. There's no objectively correct way to interpret the Constitution. I think you can make arguments of probability or like if I what start you have to say. If I people your... alive with a potato peeler, am I, fo am I following the Constitution or am I breaking the Constitution? I don't know if you're engaging with what I'm saying in good faith there. I mean, okay, it, so it, gen let, it genuinely, it. I, guess, I mean, if you want, I guess you could contrive an example where that could be allowed, but it would take some pretty big stretches. Yeah. Okay. In, in what, in what scenario would I be allowed to torture human beings to death? With I don't know. And I'm not interested in your weird impromptu uh, example. I'd rather just talk about what we are talking about, which is, okay. you know, the 14th I'm taking Amendment. your statement and I'm putting it to the extreme. So there you, are definitions, you, there are objections. Do you agree? Yeah, that the Constitution was deliberately written vaguely so it could be a living document that could be interpreted in new ways moving forward. Depending on which clause and sentence, but there's plenty of ones that are actually very specific and that there's tens of thousands of words written on after the fact by the people who wrote those sentences on how it should be interpreted by the people coming. You guys after are both them. right to some extent. I mean, it's true that what Vash is saying is that there's some values inherent in the Constitution, like cruel and unusual, that are subject to change in society. But, and that's been a, but, a, a but health of the Supreme Court. But, but Connor is, always, but Connor, Connor Connor is also... Connor is also correct that there are some things which uh, among reasonable people, like every term, right? Like any gender term, political, whatever you want to say, they're always subject to human interpretation. I mean, Vosh's well, well, point, I guess, is true. But there's, there's reasonable interpretations and there's unreasonable I interpretations. Don't, I, don't, I don't yeah, disagree with that. The procedural, the problem, the procedural uh, process in jurisprudence is to make sure and limit the idea of Exactly, from judges right. just doing whatever so they want. So again, yeah, it, because so I, not just, wait, I don't, I don't understand what's happened to my... I no, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm being heard, misinterpreted heard the... here in a way that I find very confusing. Um, I have you? never said it well, doesn't you know, matter. Well, if you get, well then, then I want you to, to pray that you don't get voted out, so I, you'll I, be able to respond to this undue attack on Vosh's character. Uh, a, a clever the gambit. Leaving body okay, I, this is a gambit you have to make, okay? A gambit. So let's see who the judges have decided to kick. Apparently, it's only one person from each side. 
Oh boy. <clears throat> it's going to be Jeb. I'm very sorry. Jeb. Thrown over the top rope. And the other one is... Sorry, it's a very long name. It's hard to read. It's very difficult to, to process in my, in my big old brain here. Uh, their name is, uh, is Pisco. I'm very sorry. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No Damn, problem. I just hate you, Pisco. What the f***? It's all yeah. good. Wait, no, that I, was two I appreciate... people from one side, I thought. I, I think we're on the same side, but with the judges. Yeah. No, I, they I, are I putting aside the, uh... their bias counter to what Vosh was saying. No, I'm I'm flipping back over to Vosh's side. There's clearly some bias going on here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> just a little. I don't know what you're talking about. We just we have a uh -huh. very everybody knows the clear, very transparent, objective. hippie dippy system. Uh, we oh. have our judges, we have our boards, we <clears throat> then have the investment board, then we have the political review board, then we have the, uh, you know, it's it's a whole process, but it's very, it looks out for the interests of the little band. It's, like it's Pisco. a living, it's a living like process. Pisco. Well, listen, no, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I, I really like talking to all these people, Turk, Lecture Fan, these are classic political contributors, uh, all of you guys, and and so thank you so much, Dylan, and, and others for having me on the show, and and hopefully you'll you'll do more of this, Dylan, because I think this is this is fun. Pisco, I'm really happy I had you on uh, immediately when I knew we were going to talk about this topic. I wanted to have you on for this topic, so I'm really happy I got to have you on. Appreciate yeah. it. See you later, Thanks guys. So much. You have a good one. Yep. And Jeb Tan, you lasted one more round than I thought you would, and I'm proud of you. Wow. Congratulations. I appreciate the high expectations. Thanks. It was really fun. You should do another one-off, do a two-off. Um, and I just want you to know I did quote tweet this with I'm going to win this, and you're really embarrassing me right now. So, But I mean, I hey, wait, happy. this is like, hey, this is close to winning. It's you are you are in the almost uh, last group of people. Yeah, it's about the friends you made along the way. Really. Yeah, when so, people take yeah. like the, the the shot of like the finalists, you'll be the guy in the background walking away. Yeah, exactly. So you know, I'll be there. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, we've got two more people, and then that's that. Then that's that. It's been a then long road. That. It's been a long road to get to these finals. Who are the last two people? Does anyone know? Oh, yeah. Who the last two people are? Is that Maddie Cakes? I see right there. I think that is Maddie Cakes. I think that is one of the last two people. And who is that other person? Is that a... Who, what is that other profile image? I can't see. Is that who I think it is? Is that the critically thinky veteran? <laughs> Oh, it is welcome. Best possible CTV. participants. Dylan Burns, it is great to see you and this beautiful audience we have. I don't know why the fuck Voss showed up tonight looking like fucking Saturday Night Fever, but how are you doing, buddy? Oh, right? good. We got Much lecture better now that you're here. It's, of course you are. The f champion is reigning. That right? is true. Last the, that, he was he was the hippie dippy champion. Was still is. He beat beat destiny, language. Remember. That you heard me is. Yeah. Is, 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 is. Let's go. So we've been we've been having a good conversation so far, and we got we're waiting on Maddie here. Yeah, we are waiting to... on Maddie here. But we can oh, we can yeah. extend the conversation because we're gonna stop talking about the legalese now that Pisco's gone. Who cares? No, about I gotta clarify my point. You promised. I will let you clarify your point, but let me let me pitch the next topic. The next topic is quickly. Uh is going to be out of all of the Republican candidates, right? Who's the best and who's the worst of the bunch of the ones that are still there and could become president if Trump just was decided to be a criminal and thrown in a, in a cell, which is a real conversation we have to have. Um, uh, but Vosh, what was your thing you wanted to clarify? Oh, just to be clear, I'm not down on proceduralism as a concept. We need it for rule of law to function. The issue is that the Constitution is so goddamn vague that oftentimes it really does seem like where a person settles on an issue will just be a byproduct of what their political bias is going into it. And I think sometimes it's important to accept that and argue the merits morally of the outcome rather than to like, because it's like, is is the president an officer? A, um, yes. B, can uh, this be done without any like um, previous uh, judicial, you know, like like without going through a criminal procedure? Probably yes. But that's the only issue at hand, right? Like that with, with very few exceptions, like that's what people are talking about when it comes to whether or not this is valid. So past that, it's like, OK, what are we really talking about? Do people care about procedure this much or are people using it as a proxy? And if they are, we probably should also talk about what people actually care about. You know, people don't really care about matters of constitutional fact in their day to day, but then all of a sudden it, you know, affects them in some way and they they come out for it. We got to know why. I mean, it's obvious why in this case, but with, may I be... respond? 
well, sure. Quickly, if, if but it's like being ten to five seconds. To but we have to. We have to move on to the okay. next topic. So, so as somebody who cares about the republic and the due process of law and the respect of the the rule of law, that's the reason why I'm appealing to going to the utmost level of proceduralism when it comes to something as important as barring somebody from the office of the president of the United States. I don't think this should be done half-assed. I don't think this should be done by a state attorney by themselves in a single state. I don't think it should be done by a single state legislature or judiciary. I think it should be done by the highest courts in but our that's office. not being pro proceduralism That's just what? you being pro delaying yeah. the vote. There could be a procedural it's answer not... to the state uh, Supreme Court being the final say on this. That's a procedural know, answer. It's, it seems to me that like the entire basis of our system is innocent until proven guilty Right? So that, has nothing to, that has nothing to do with that what we're talking about. It has everything to do with the oh, no idea. <laughs> the Blood, Blood walked beans. into the I'm wrong theater. Come on. Mother eating beans. That's a good point, Vosh. Come on. Dylan. So do deal with mean? it. How You're are you just going to tell word. somebody that they can't be in a civil office whenever they haven't been convicted of a crime? Take it up okay. with the Constitution. Well, now look, since That's no one wants stupid. to respond to this great point by oh, the CDB, founding let's move, on to the next, let's move on to the next question, which is, of the other Republican candidates, Trump is in the slammer, or Trump fell over and bumped his head and he... Didn't get in all of his men couldn't get him back together again. Whatever it is, he's no longer able to be president. Out of the ones that are left, who's the worst and who's the best? Hey, Maddie's muted. Maddie, are you muted? Discord not, muted. Uh, I think they've Discord uh, muted. Um, I'm not muted. I don't have them muted. No, she no, muted I'm herself. Not muted. Oh, gosh, there she is. Sorry, there was just such a good discussion before. I of course didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, there's some de. I wish there were more decent um, candidates like who? that I could talk about. But who would you recommend? I, oh, God, let's not let's not label it recommend. Um, let's label it like just isn't on like the Trump train. I was gonna. I would normally say like okay, maybe Nikki Haley, sort of. But then she um, played the game of like, how can I say slavery without saving saying slavery? And it's like, well, that's a real bummer. Are you um, kind of saying it's like a, a tarot card, right? Like if you had to choose the, the best possible tarot card to get that you'd be like, OK, I have to settle with this one. Is that a better analogy? I don't. Then, then you would want. Uh, the oh, no. because she's a woman. I get it. <laughs> No, I no think it's cool. because Maddie and I have actually done the tarot card thing before, Vosh, but thanks okay, for well, throwing in your two cents. You're we, welcome. We have. I, the worst is probably um, Vivek, just because he's a joke of and, cents. like, You would pick Vivek out of, out of all the candidates. It's I just don't like, no, I'd say he's a, he probably Vivek. is the one that I take the least seriously. Oh, you don't like um, the most? Yeah, because he gotcha. he's a joke and, like, makes no sense. Um, at least with someone like Nikki Haley or even, I can't believe I'm saying this, Chris Christie, um, you have some sort of idea of what their platform would be and where their their stances actually are versus being just generally reactionary and trying to uh, frame yourself as Trump light, because that seems to be the approach. Well, for he's a lot not of these exactly guys. trying to be Trump light. He's trying to be like Trump. So he, he is much more trying to be pushing on his. <laughs> Uh, standards and, and his, you know, vision of things. What I don't like about Vivek is his actual standings on different types of policies and how in his previous life he hasn't been consistent with those policies. I would much more prefer someone like DeSantis, who has been put through the ringer through national media, local state politics and all that, because he's got stuff to stand on. And I think he has a better chance of actually doing the conservative Republican thing. Yeah, I oh, think we're talking about what he has to stand around. on. Well, I was just going to say, if we can't have a female president, we should at least have a president who wears high heels. So, yeah. The same yeah, that's right. fair. <laughs> Base. Um, yeah, I Good think the, v Vivek is only like in it for a book deal, I think. Uh, he's got no chance or a in any kind of position. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, something. Lady ballers. He's, he's looking for a concession. Um, there's no way, like, at all. Um, I think he's mainly just cribbing off attention that he's getting because uh, Donald Trump isn't present to the debate, so he can be kind of like the stand-in Trump. Uh, in terms of who could be the least harmful if they won, probably... <sighs> I want to say Chris Christie mostly because he'd spend most of his um, presidency arguing with the rest of the GOP uh, because his neocon tendencies would like anger the more far right mega crowd. I mean, they'd be too unproductive to do anything like 
actually damaging. I don't really know. The Nikki Haley slavery bit was pretty funny, though. I, I thought she was doing the more moderate bit, but I guess like, you know, you, you, you can take the you can take the radical out of the GOP, but you can't take the slavery apology. They always have to throw in one for the Confederate base. So, yeah, I don't really know. I, I She's South I Carolina her... too. I mean, she's South Carolina Republican Party. She ain't just I... any Republican Party. Don't 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 forget it was the Democrats that actually fought for slavery. It was the Republicans and Abraham Lincoln that ended slavery. And no, it was, was the Republicans that ended slavery. Can I tell them why Democrats out here in the South, boy? Pause, pause, question. <laughs> if if it was the Democrats who fought for slavery, that means the Civil War was over slavery then, yes? I agree, yeah. Okay, dope. There's multiple good. issues. Good. There's multiple issues that were definitely in place. Slavery was definitely one of them. The other one was, from the legal point, the state's rights issue, right? So, <laughs> yeah, to no one issue okay. at one time. States you know what, rights just like, to do just what? Like most, people, you know, most people do throughout their day, they're multitasking of the ideas. I don't know why most people think that as soon as you get on the internet, you can only singularly understand one idea, and then we're just going to paint it this one way, and then, like, boom, next thing you know, motherfucker. Lady Ballers is all over Daily Wire. I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. What, I, Lady I Ballers? Like pro- I don't I, Okay. I, I would like to suggest <laughs> there that slavery, that slavery is one of six possibilities as to why there was a civil war. And as to your, as to your question, uh, the best possible Republican candidate who's left, if uh, you're a hog, is Ron DeSantis, because he'll just keep spewing out all the stupid f- culture war shit while doing absolutely nothing. And if you're a Democrat then I would definitely say that Ron DeSantis is also your, your best candidate, because if you're a Democrat, you don't have to worry about Ron DeSantis actually enacting any kind of legislation at a federal level that'll have any meaningful problems with your life, because everything that he's done in Florida, he's only been able to do because he uses weird ass localized hillbilly strong arm tactics with mother heads of HOAs and like the chief of school boards in the middle of Suwannee. And once he got into a federal, like a federal position, he literally has nobody who's going to back his play. And he's going to be alone on an island, just getting martyred for four years with everybody screaming, why aren't you Trump? I don't know. DeSantis has been doing a pretty good job of supporting. Can I, can I quickly ask? The, uh, yeah, before we move off of Vivek, so before we move, wait, before we move off of Vivek, I was just curious. Does anybody in this room like Vivek? I, do. I, I like some of what like he more. says, but I I just he's not consistent enough in what he actually does for me. I was supporting Vivek for a well, while there. I'm just supporting DeSantis now. The only two I don't like are Nikki Haley because she said she believes in man-made global warming. How <laughs> how stupid! You cannot you cannot be a not, presidential not candidate. In this you country can't if you make believe in man-made global, global warming. warming. Man-made global warming is one of the biggest hoaxes of all time. The fact that anybody would say they believes in that is the dumbest thing ever. So huh. she disqualified herself. I, I apologize for lecture fan mind. here. <laughs> it's I mean lecture again. lecture fan is basically like the median voter, right? For, for the GOP. So if anything, it's kind of like representative. We're getting like a little crack well, over- in the. Over, he's definitely over more on the Trump train. Over, over yeah. half of America doesn't believe in the the that we're all going to die in ten years from global warming, like Al Gore said. Twenty. But that doesn't ago. also uh, reinforce your claim that man-made global warming isn't real. It's it's a it's a it's a complete political movement. It has there's no point the in talking about him to anything. He manufactures these <laughs> points live to disagree. We just with need more nuclear, right. man. Peepaw, it's nice coping late. mechanism, Vash. Nice coping mechanism. Like I, I've I've done I a fair it. number of these, and I think um it's it really is like he's like the ultimate Dark Souls boss, you know, where you like ram your head against a wall. Um, no, it's like losing, Matrix yeah. Resurrections. I just right, watched exactly. that yesterday. Okay, we're on repeat here. It's the same shit. We were talking about Trump four years ago, right? We were talking about Trump four years before that. We're going into the same shit this time, except we're, this time Trump is going to get real late. TV. We're the trying to say that Ron DeSantis is our best bet. It's like, it's like uh, lady Trump. ballers is what it's no, like. No, it really is <laughs> like what needs to happen is that first we need to get four more years of Trump to get shit heading in the right direction. And then we need eight more years of DeSantis to bedrock the shit in. That's what we need because there's a whole bunch of dumbasses in government that don't understand legislation and and legal procedural law right the very simplest bedrocks of the american value which is innocent until proven guilty it's like the bedrock if you ain't got that then it ain't america well let me let me let me ask you uh ctv do you think biden is uh committed corruption 
Man. I tell you what. Nobody. It's like it's like whenever you are looking at somebody that Oh my god, you the answer is yes. God. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's definitely yeah, right? I was going to tell you a clever okay. story, but if you want to hear the clever story, we can skip all through to the next shit, right? And we don't even have to worry about a special fucking story. So, so what's right? more, I thought this what's was more true. true? I gotta apologize. What? Excuse the fuck out of me for trying to entertain you sons of bitches for a few minutes. Damn it. Excused. So, so what's all more right. true? Biden's corruption or man-made global warming? All right? That's the, that's the real question. Cor Biden's corruption by a long shot. Definitely. Definitely Biden's wait, corruption. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I hear what Biden okay, was doing in Ukraine. I've been waiting for a while in order to do my he, little he two cents, so I'm going to do my two cents on the topic. to pro-global warming. Uh, True, propaganda. it was with the natural gas company, absolutely. So anyways, so who is the best Republican standing? It's going to be, uh, if you're a centrist, it's going to be Chris Christie. He's from the Northeast. He's kind of progressive on some issues, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that my boy autist Ron is the best Republican out of all that's left standing. I think he needs to lean into the Homelander memes. I think he needs to have a whole bunch of Zoomers photoshopping him as Homelander, chewing his teeth in a very weird way, as if he's on stimulants. I think he needs to lean into the fact that he's autistic stick and just be a policy wonk i think he needs to lean into that so that but he's is not who a I policy think is the best wonk, really. i think we could talk wonk. about that we I mean, that's he, why he, he said he leaned hard. into it well i mean we he can had, so right now he's leaning away from it he'd have to like move towards it in any fashion all he does is culture war shit he like yeah, they got cool. they got mm. trounced in the midterms what? um are you crazy? Ron DeSantis dominated in the midterms. He won by 20 points no, in the a swing Repu state. The Republican Party got trounced in the midterms in large yeah, part DeSantis because all they know. had was um, culture war talking points. They did like uh, exit polls afterwards. Republican voters don't give a shit about the whole trans, non-binary, mm -hmm. school, this, that, the other. But that's all Ron DeSantis has marketed himself as on a national level. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you okay. think for so one second the Republican the parents Repub don't give a fuck about that agenda, you are not paying Listen, well, hey, then get, get mad get, get mad at them. They're the one who filled out the exit poll. They're the one who showed that they don't care as much about it as other issues like that the economy. Was, that was, I literally that, flipped that was direct, based, that was, based on that, showing like this is what your leaders actually are like running on, and people are horrified. That's why we were able to flip as many districts as we all have in battleground states. Yeah, I guess okay. whining yeah, about yeah, trans people doesn't actually hearing. appeal right, much right, to the right, lived right. experience of the American voter. I'm going to start doing that, that again, real quick. Uh, yeah, okay, so that was during my intro, so I'm going to continue. And uh, basically, I disagree. I, I think that his policies during COVID made him popular uh, during uh, in Florida based off of that. I think that he can lean into that. His uh, policy of genociding the old people was very popular in the state of Florida. Also, when it comes to education, uh, prohibiting like giga progressive education and all that kind of stuff is also popular in the state of Florida, which leans purple, not blue. And then I would say that my least favorite and uh, I think probably the most incompetent would have been Vivek. Ramaswamy, I don't I think he has a tech bro solution to public issues where he's like, let's just withdraw from, you know, NATO and let's withdraw from, you know, the Far East and let's give Taiwan to, you know, China. That way they like us more and blah. And let's just manufacture microchips at home. And so he has like a very like tech bro analysis of the world. But I think that would be disastrous as international policy. And so as a result, he is my least favorite Republican. I'll shut up now. I will say wow. though how we can, do. How, how we do can none of you guys pronounce his name? For the love of God, I said no, Vivek Ramaswamy. The for it's the love, the no his last name. None of you can pronounce his first this name. This is it's America. Incredible. Thank We're you. Republicans are racist. Who gives a shit? I know it's Vivek. Sorry. It's Vivek. I just think it was the same. Me and I are talking about. Name. Hold on, if hold on, hold on. If he wanted to be called Vivek, he should have put an A and an E in there instead of just the E. It's no. Very which one of these guys are we talking about? Tell me which one we're talking about here. The Indian Vivek. one, Vivek. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah. It's I didn't even bother Vivek learning his either. name. I'm going to be honest. I'm a the, Swami. I all right. Why don't you have a Vivek Vivek uh, sticker in your background, man? With the right pronunciation. <laughs> these are all Democrats. I would not put that. You got to propagate the pronunciations, right? You got to propagate that information, man. Uh, look, I'm going to be honest. I didn't bother learning any of the rest of them because Trump's going to get reelected. That's what's going to happen, right? I want True. you to wrap your mind around this f idea. Trump's going to be president. It Maybe. doesn't matter what the f it is that any of these legislatures decide that there are these f corrupt judges are trying to do. Trump's going to be president, okay? Get your hands around it. 
And I don't know what the f*** is anybody else is going to be talking about, because all of this is just going to be... What, I'll tell you what, if they keep continuing down this course, you will actually have people pick up their f- pitchforks and head down to buildings in a real f- way if they keep up this guys, bullshit guys, we've Trump been watching an insurrection now watch yourself or we'll do an insurrection years. it's bullshit we why why do you what do you base this off you guys have lost in the midterms you lost the elections a month ago in virginia in kentucky ohio everything is not on your Just side watching, no, i'm, I'm with lecture on this one biden's uh, for uh, Trump. polling that puts him above biden biden, biden is going to kick ass you guys are all going to be weeping in and kentucky. sad like i don't understand Joe man. biden cannot even function he can't even talk so, so I mean, well, it doesn't wait. It doesn't. It doesn't. She's cognitive. That motherfucker trying to walk upstairs. It's like it's you like I, 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 cognitive I, I, levels speeches. are irrelevant here. Uh, Joe Biden did be better mean. in the yeah, 2022 man, midterm rough. in large part because of mobilized young people, and no young people are going to come out for a f- genocide supporter. He killed oh my his God, support. Bosh, no one's going to care about Gaza. That is, that is a, a genuinely racist. I right. Like unironically, like who gives a f- if the minorities die in the tens of thousands? This is reality. No. I'm not saying me. I'm if, still wait, care. You think it's, I'm you, saying you American think people are not going to care over abortion, over the economy, over the southern border. Let's be honest. What's this deal with reality? Young it's people, got nothing to do with my personal opinion. Young Whoa. people, one hundred percent going to be dampened prior to this. Think okay, the young sorry, people I can't, wait, I can't do you think the situation like, wait, wait, in Israel wait, wait, is going to end like tomorrow? I want to wait. Wait. Okay. I want to have this back and forth just for a moment, and then we're going to wrap it up because it feels like we're going to another topic. Unless you guys want to carry this on. Um, but um, I, I want to have uh, IRI be able to clearly state his position because there was a few people talking over him. Well, I'm just saying that people have short memories and the Israel story is not going to be in the news as it is today, which is just normal. People have already, it's already started to fade from the news. I'm sure, Vosh, you're not covering it as much as like everybody is. And so let's just be honest. The reality is that this is not going to be a big issue and young people are going to care more about domestic issues just like everybody, abortion, the economy, the southern border, and these issues are going to dominate. There may be a small impact from what happened in Gaza a year earlier, but it's going to be minimal. I, I, I'm not trying to be a dick. It's not my personal opinion. It's just the reality of politics. I so like, this, this, isn't, this, isn't, this isn't going away. Well, it kind of is your personal opinion that that's let's, the reality, let's, 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 and I agree with it. CDB. For a second, like, I want to have Vosh respond to this quickly. He was trying to respond earlier. News coverage will decline, sure. That happens with everything, including Ukraine. But Ukraine's still a pretty big talking point in the current, you know, political climate. The problem is, is like the average Democrat probably isn't going to remember or care that much, but two main groups will. Arabs, obviously, and also um, young people. And like young people, young people don't even need a good reason to get perpetually angry at the DNC. But now enshrined in the minds of a bunch of people who were previously energized maybe by the success of the Bernie campaign or Biden doing better on unions is the knowledge that for all the good Biden did for the brief time that he had in his first term before this happened, then he just went ahead and supported the exact same genocidal shit that we imagined Trump would have in the same position. That will dampen they, young people's support for genocide. Biden. I, see, I Look, I gotta is, agree. You can't but even like, contest it, 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 the... Yes. I just I don't think that like if you go back to the beginning of Biden's presidency, we have the, the botched pullout out of Afghanistan that kind of headed it up to begin with. We haven't really seen any like strong leader characteristics out of this guy. What we've seen is, is you know, people around him giving him bad ideas, assuming he's even the one making the decision at all. I think from day one, the guy's been getting handed a set of instructions and be being told what to say, and he doesn't have any real ideas of his own. If he did, then he wouldn't have been caught lying back in the eighties when he ran for president. Then, why am I so hearing from doesn't this really matter at the end of the day. He's just a piece of shit and should be in f-ing office. But we're sitting here having to deal with this shit. So get ready for Trump twenty twenty four, baby. That's all we got to say. This was like white noise yeah. when you're tuning a radio station. Wrong now time. I'm like retuning oh, back to the great. radio. Great, I know, what right? I said. All right, to be now, clear, maybe we can talk- to be clear, yeah. I want. Biden to win over Trump. This is not like sure, a, oh, people, I'm and I've you. advocated people vote for Biden in spite of everything. But like, holy shit, you know, way to way to kill momentum with a with a demographic, and also hey, to kill a demographic. Biden reschedule. That Biden's just gonna, he's going to reschedule marijuana or take steps oh, towards God. it, and that's going to distract everybody like shiny keys over here. I know people get upset when I say this, but I, do you it, believe the in thing democracy? is this is a conflict on the other side of the globe that we are not directly involved in. This is not Iraq 2003. No, even, this is not going to impact our, the outcome of the election in 2024. I'm sorry. So, so, I just I don't think that you're in the world. 
I think you're giving the rescheduling a little bit more weight than what it's actually going to be able to pull because you're assuming that, say, conservative voters are going to give a fuck about that, and they're not. Frankly, the only one that's going to give a fuck is liberal voters. So, like, well, I, that, I, well, you're, also, that's really yeah, just going to help Americans swing, maybe, but Israel's position, it's not going to be I enough. Well, CTV, that, that's kind of what I was joking when Vosh and I arrived. This entire topic was supposed to be about, like, good and bad Republican candidates, but we had progressives and liberals fighting over whether or not Biden is a viable candidate. So what I'm saying is Republicans just need to shut the f*** up and let lefties fight, and they'll f- rip each other to shreds because it's what they're good at. If this isn't, the, well, wait, this true. isn't a lefty liberal infighting thing. Guys, this is just over to Turk quick. Uh, He's been waiting. And then Vosh. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that goes to what I wanted to ask IRI because, you know, I haven't tuned into the news for about past week. The three items you said of local domestic issues, the border, the economy and contraception or abortion. abortion who's leading the polls in those three different topics? Nationally, the Democrats and the Democrats. Well, the Democrats are winning in the elections. I think the polls are bullshit. No, are today, polls? At, they don't if mean you put Biden versus Trump versus uh, the other Republican candidate, who's winning? Well, in the Trump polls or an election? In the polls. Polls mean shit right at this point. The polls this don't mean jack shit. Uh, you guys okay. keep losing with yeah. polls. Well, you guys keep losing with the but polls. Yeah, mid, to, midterm to, polling to, didn't no, really work out too well. So we're you. trying to gauge the current sentiment of the nation, right? And you had three different if, if topics. If you ask and voters, you're, and your side's not even winning in those three their different opinion sides right on now. Those yes, issues, we are. The Democrat version of those issues went out. Biden is unpopular for a number of reasons. It doesn't change the fact that the average American wants free and legal contraception, wants the right to an abortion. Um, you know, like if you how about if, the border then? Um, well, it depends on how you phrase the question. If you okay, ask somebody how about if they the want economy, to, wait, what? We, no, didn't, we didn't even get to the border question. If you ask somebody like, do you think the border should be safe? You had a really safe, good answer, sweet answer every, for well, the abortion sh- one. If you ask you know, people, you can't tell me to be quiet. If you ask people, yes, I can. I mean, he definitely if you can, ask people, right? And he definitely well, if you, if you okay, ask wait, people, wait, wait, wait. this is what we're going to do. We're going to have Vosh. Well, this is like wait, basic please, methodology. Please, we're, so, we're so close to the end, so let's keep it. I was it. talking about energy, right, Vosh. Okay. You didn't have to butt into conversation there, man. You have no, no right to dictate who you talk to. I'm not, and you don't have any right to interrupt me, man. Can we slow down? We're going to let Turk finish. I want to hear higher eyes. What you want is irrelevant to us. And then we'll have Vosh go, and then we're going to wrap it up. James, did you want to go too? I, I just want to be the, the person to point out that IRI saying that this will just have a minimal impact, the whole like Biden thing and, you know, him like actively supporting a genocide, how it's going to have a very minimal effect. I'd like to point out that like Donald Trump literally ran against this gooey brain chuckle four years ago and literally won by what, 42,000 votes? So when you turn around and say, it's not going to have a whole lot of effect, he literally... Yeah, we ain't like got COVID this time, asshole, so mail-in million, ballots ain't going to be happening. Million registered voters. James, I'm just saying every election is argument. close, James. Every election is close and always comes down to a couple of thousand here or there, so it's not a great argument. Okay, you we're going to throw it... it would have very little impact. 42,000 out of 280 million yes. is very little impact. so what do you impact. think? Okay, first of all, I could argue like Michigan, Biden won by 150,000, where most of the, the, the biggest Arab population is. 200,000 Arabs are registered to vote. Arab Americans are registered to vote in Michigan, if I recall. So it's it, not all those it. people are going to vote against Biden, right? These people are not a monolith. Most of them are Americans first, and they're going to vote for domestic issues, just like all of us. Americans so it might have a small impact. Genocide. Yeah, Americans well, okay. do care about it. First of, first of all, I'm not going to debate the genocide thing. I'm just saying you should, the, the I, I Arab American good. vote is not going to impact the outcome of the election in 2024. That might upset some people to hear that. And it's not saying we well, don't what do you care think? about they're not going to come out and saying. vote. Is that what you're saying? No, they will come I out and vote. Think... And most of them will vote for Democrats because they know they stand for. Wait, 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 wait. You think they're going to vote for I Democrats? Just, it, it just comes to wait. Hold on really quickly. I just want to say I right. Like. You know me well. I think that the wait, wait, culture wait, please, that has women please. still wearing Human, veils wait, is probably hold on. more Humans are talking. I'm just please saying. dial it down, okay? Let You're us, not the moderator, Vosh. Um, Come on, man. The, yeah, really not the, the like, moderator when, Saturday Night when, Fever, but you when know. When people criticize... De- all right, you, you know me well enough to know that I'm not like a crazy Twitter... Le- like, I just say whatever. Like, I try to think, you know? Like, when, when you say that, you're reminding me of stereotypes of arrogant, like... East Coast Democrats, the, oh, we don't care what they think, we don't need their vote. Like, 
Fu- then why winning, did that winning, guy sound like he's from England? Please. Winning in an environment like this. He's supposed to be sounding like he's from England. Don't make no fucking sense. Winning in an environment. Winning in an environment like this. I mean, we're not exactly dealing with really expansive margins. It matters that we get every vote. And when you say stuff like, "Well, who cares? There aren't that many Arab Americans," it really comes across like I don't know the worst possible uh, stereotype of how a Democrat could act when they're doing something unpopular. Well, I, I, I appreciate your thoughts on it, but I'm just dealing out the reality of the situation. So if it's coming off as callous, then that's subjective and in your interpretation of it. I'm just dealing with the facts of the situation. It's not my personal thoughts. I'm not saying who gives a shit about the Arab Americans. Their vote doesn't matter. I'm just saying oh, the numbers okay. aren't there. The math doesn't add up for this argument that, oh, well, he's going to lose because these demographics are going to take him down. That's all I'm pushing back on. Mostly young people. Can I get in on this? So okay, can we? Well, uh, well, before you get on an election fair, and Turk has been waiting very patiently, and I want to oh, give okay. him a chance right. to speak. I already said my piece. Uh, I oh, asked okay, IRI for okay, his opinions fan, on the three. You're days. gonna then you go, and then we're gonna wrap it up because it is okay. Look, past just, the end just, time. Just, just real quick, the Vosh's position is preposterous because I, I think 70, 80 percent of Americans have very, very strong support for yeah. Israel. So Joe Biden actually right now is take a look at the, the ceasefire losing, polling, losing more votes, losing more mm-hmm. votes because he's not supporting Israel enough. He's trying then to look into what Israel ceasefire actually means. Campaign. So I, think, just I, I stuff. think I think Joe Biden is going to I think Joe Biden is actually losing votes because he's not giving Israel enough support. That's his real. I problem. agree. Well, more J. Okay. Well, and with that and with that agreement, we're now going to wrap it up. And now we're going to go around, and this is the last round, but only one of you will be named a winner by our independent voting system of democracy that everyone loves. And so I want to go around the room and give everybody a chance to say quickly why they're better than everyone else and everybody else should be thrown in a volcano and they should win. So we're going to start with Connor. Yeah, I'm a Burkean centrist asshole. I try to see the worst and best in everybody. I try to describe that to you as quickly as possible. I respect and love the amount of effort that it takes to go into panels because I tried to follow in Dylan's footsteps and his shoes were too big to fill. It was tough out there getting trying to herd cats. So, um, yeah, I, I wish that the community was more like this. I wish we could have more fights like this. Uh, so uh, <laughs> please love me. And I'll love you back forever. And why should the other people not win? Uh, Because they're all smug assholes. You know, I'm definitely not a smug asshole. They're all smug assholes. They're all arrogant and narcissistic and egotistical. Not me. I'm the least egotistical and the least arrogant out of all of these people. CTV, uh, current reigning WWE champion. Uh, What? Do you have to say well, about why you should win and other people I, should lose? I think that's, you know, champion privilege to go last, but I'll definitely insert a good 15 seconds if you want in between. You know what? I'll give you the champion privilege. I'll allow CTV, the good, brilliant CTV, to go last. And let's move over to IRI then. <laughs> um, what's the question? Why should I win and why should the others lose? Is yes, that what it is? that is the good question. Well, I, I think I should win because I'm willing to tell people the truth and I believe Joe Biden can win and I've got the facts to back it up and it seems to upset people very much to hear it. Um, as far as why these guys should lose, uh, I don't know. I hate to see anybody lose, but um, I don't know. I, I like all these guys. I don't want them to lose. Oh, okay. James? Uh, why should I win? Because... You've historically never, ever, ever, ever put over anybody to the left of, you know, Joe Biden's corpse. I mean, I know he's not dead yet. Wasn't Vosh champion? Still have the belt? He still has a belt. (laughs) Right behind me. Are you? Now, all we're oh, seeing now is, is, is Vosh to the right I, of Joe I'm Biden. Is that what you're claiming, James? Yeah, I'm totally expecting for there to be a belt on the way. Ah, his corpse. His corpse. It expects where it falls. Um. Uh, why me? I don't. I don't know. I uh, because everybody hates me, including all the leftists. And you would literally get to piss off every single Highlander leftist on social media because they all loathe me. Mm. Um, and that would be a win-win for everybody because all the conservatives can laugh and uh, mm. all the leftists can cope and seethe. And this would make me incredibly happy. This is a very compelling argument, I have to say. I have to say, I do like picking somebody that will piss everyone off. Lecture fan, what do you have I to say? Piss 
Every well, I, I, I was just, I was actually going to say, like, I think I should win because if you actually look at Dylan's chat, I'm clearly the one that triggered the most of those snowflakes and hurt their little snowflake feelings by spitting truth that they've never heard before. And then finally, they're exposed to it and they see somebody that's smart and articulate spewing the truth on Dylan Burns's channel and they can't handle it. And t Dylan's chat just going off the chains, mad at lecture fan. It's classic. And why should nobody else win? Why should you win over the other people? Well, any of these leftists that 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 haven't recognized the actual racism and anti-Semitism that's infected the Democrat Party, I pray that IRI will someday realize that he needs to leave the Democrat Party because they are so racist and anti-Semitic. It's a disgusting party. They're a history of slavery and 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 civil rights violations, and so that's why all these nope. leftists should lose. You won me over, bro. Ma <laughs> Maddie, what do you have to say? Well, I mean, considering, Dylan, that you had said that you really like options that piss people off, what pisses off people more than when a woman wins? So I'm just saying, like, by your own definition of what you are looking for, there's really only one clear winner. And you're looking at her. So yeah, piss people off. Uh, let let women win just this one time, just this one time. Then we can go back to normal. <laughs> just this one time, okay. it makes up for everything. Yeah, oh, everything. big time, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, oh. no, we had a meeting. Okay. Good, and to we good to know. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to know this, Turk. Yeah. So I like to replicate what uh, Connor said. We need more conversations like these. I think having actual conversation and not just the blood sports is a good thing because kind of like what lecture said, uh, we need to have actually exposure to other types of opinions on all people's platforms. And I think that's a good thing. I hope that I've been a logical human being and I've actually not been uh, a deranged Republican like many of your viewers would think. And that, you know, including me in Republican conversations would be a good thing for the community. So why these other people shouldn't win, you know, maybe because, you know, that chest hair is weak, dude. You need to grow some better chest hair. Ah. Ah. And Mr. Chest Hair. Uh, just this once, uh, I think that a man should win. Uh, my, my fellow gamers, uh, they, they tell you about male privilege. Do you feel it? When the Stacy does not say hi to you, I, I ask you, support me, and, and, and finally, <laughs> let the guys have something for once. Um, and uh, other people should lose. Um, uh, they won't lose. It's a false dichotomy. Uh, a man winning will make everyone win. Uh, finally, a man in charge. That's my slogan. Finally. Hmm. Hmm. Really? A man in charge. Now that's unusual. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna throw it to the judges now, and we're, and we're gonna whoa, make a decision. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, oh you did promise him the last. I did Champion promise. Champion goes last. No. That is Love true. Hold the phone that is true. So judges, audience. hold your judgment. You have heavy words to hear. All right, so let's go. Let, let's go back through the list here. Vosh over here apologizing, and then trying to claim gamer status as if he knows what gamers are like. Gamers are hardcore son you want to come at gamers let's go don't give me some apologetic bullshit if you're trying to represent gamers first off right turk great sentiment bro but you know what i, I love you gotta bring that energy maddie great sentiment you want to talk about last time women won isn't there a woman vice president give me a break we're progressing through society you don't deserve shit just because you're a woman right so that's just how that Cookie crumbles, lecture fan, great fucking arguments. You're exactly right. Very articulate, but I got to be honest with you, brother. Right? Even you yourself got caught up in the CTV charisma tonight. I and did. you know I it's did. true. You know I it's did. true, James. James, you did as well. I saw you nodding your head. You're like, you know what? If there's a motherfucker in this room that's carrying the conversation along, it's CTV. IRI. Nothing but love for you ever, man. Regardless of whatever the past shit was, I really don't give a f Right, so great to have you here. And counterpoints, you know, brother, right here, living in the same area, seeing the same politics, understand the country the same way. That's just kind of how it is. But again, energy level, charisma, and that's exactly why CTV, the reigning hippy dippy champion, mother 
brought it to end the show up tonight because we all know that bringing the energy at the end of the show is always the hardest spot to fill. And that's exactly why CTV needs to win this hippy dippy rumble. Hmm. You know, I do got to ask you something, CTV. What's that, buddy? You know, Vosh technically never lost the title in a match. Mm. Yeah, I think about that. If you, did, if you didn't count the one between him and Destiny as a match, then that only, I think, uh, speaks to the quality of the characters interacting in that moment if you didn't call that a match. So if you're actually saying that Vosh never won a real one, that the no, one that what, was what I'm, lost... No, 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 you don't understand, CT. But what I'm saying is when he yeah. lost, he lost it because he just... He, he was too lazy because he's a socialist and didn't want to do the matches because of his terrible libtard values. Yeah, and that happens. Well, where you're a workhorse. If I give you a match tonight, you'd, you'd do it and you'd, and you'd tap him out. And so what I'm I saying mean, that's is, what we how do. can you really say you're undisputed, though, when Vosh never lost? I didn't say I was undisputed. I said I was okay. rating. So you would say you are disputed? Oh, I would say that everybody on the left would definitely have their day going oh, CTV Stays retarded. <laughs> but they didn't put in the f- work did they and that's mm-hmm. exactly why they're not raining hello that's just how it is Vosh, what do you think about this I, I think that think this is I, think, I think that his legal personhood is of dubious status and i think that every second i spend talking to him is an insult to me and my entire lineage um that being said, I respect you Damn, and what you do. Four words. So I'm willing. Well, it definitely goes I'm, all the way back to the '70s and John Travolta. I'm, I'm willing to debase myself uh, in, in in the way you're implying uh, for your sake. Wow. My goodness, you hear you, you hear what he's saying, CTV. I, I see what I what I hear saying. Right, is that if there's going to be an attempt on any type of challenge, then both challengers need to possess said same belt. So that there's not any type of dispute as to whether or not both are recognized as the same. That's yeah. what I see. Why don't you show us your belt, CTV? Oh, I don't have one. Isn't that a deal? It's been over a mm. year and Dylan hasn't done his work. That's Amazing. Curious. Well, look, all, all I'm going to say they is They say possession that... is half of Hippy Dippy Championship, you know. Oh my goodness. Uh, 90%. <laughs> oh my goodness. 90%. <laughs> my goodness. That is a complication, a it's legal complication. Like you still have the belt, actually. It's really a, a complication when it comes to the He's level of work that someone was putting in before they headed over to Ukraine and, and no, started exploring yeah, yeah. more personal Travolta's ventures. Got strap, dog. Travolta's got the strap. Look at that. Wow. Is that thing pretty? Oh. That thing is pretty. Oh. Yeah. It is debate, real pretty. Debate con. This needs to happen at debate con. You know what? If we, when we do hippie, if we, if we ever relaunch hippie dippy championship, you Live. will get the belt and you in will person. be the first champion. Okay. When we in start the person. matches again. It's well made. Anyway, Real solid. who are you talking to? I was talking to you, but moving on. Just, just so we're making sure it's on the record. Cause mm-hmm. that could have been left open right later down the road. I know how mother like to edit shit. That right? was on the so, record. Okay. okay. So, See, we're, we're watching CGI right now. Moving on, and that is a beautiful belt. Uh, moving on. I don't know. It looks second gonna, rate, considering it's the first edition, if I'm being honest. Well, isn't that making it more valuable? No, it actually makes it less valuable, because look at who's is actually on. Would you say right? first I mean, edition? Or would you I say mean, the first guy edition? Did, you're or? saying that the guy didn't even like a, properly like a, defend like a, it. There's a no first, respect a there. First, yeah, but then that makes it even more special. It's like a defective first edition. No, it's it like makes you, it less special like a, because it's like worth Imagine defending. A, a defective Duh. first edition Superman comic. Oh, my God. How valuable would that be? Moving on. Ooh. The judges have come in with their decision, and I have to say that the decision surprised me. You know, the, the, you know, sometimes I get lost in the bureaucratic mess here of the hippy dippy judging pool of of one hundred to ten thousand judges that uh, review these types of debates and decide who wins and loses. But what I didn't expect was this victor. The victor is lecture fan. The lawyer from Montana. Boom, uh, baby. The legal uh, out, giant. Out done yet well again. Deserved. Well deserved. Well, well deserved. Well deserved. Global well deserved. warming doesn't exist. For, uh, Global warming doesn't for, exist. For esteemed accomplishments in knowing the 13th <laughs> Amendment. Uh, lecture yes. fan, I, I concede to you. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you. Bob. Brilliant. Brilliant. You truly well, had to pick a skull of the pound. Just so we're clear, that was never actually a question, Bosh. Okay? Never actually a question. Oh my god. So so lecture fan, as as Victor tonight, do you have any any words <laughs> you want to say? I would I would just like to thank my wife. I would like to thank my family, my mom and my dad. Uh thanks for raising me and, and teaching me the truth. Uh, and and that's all I've got to say. Amen. 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 Roll on, man. Roll on. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in and being a part of today's Hippie Dippy Rumble Anniversary Edition. Uh, it was really cool to have all these people on that, you know, I haven't seen in a very long time. I've been over in Ukraine getting shot at a little bit, and it was really nice to do this. It felt like uh, it felt like uh, t- taking a, a chalice and, and dipping it into the pool of my youth, you know, going back a little bit. It was it was fantastic. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'll think about doing this again in the future. Um, I, I'm really happy with how it went tonight. I think it went, it went pretty well. Thank you so much for coming on, everybody. Did you, did you oh, know Dylan, one more thing. The spell one more thing, Dylan. Colors. Oh, yeah. Dylan. Yeah? Love you, bro. Love you, too. Okay. It's got Ukraine colors, see? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> oh, it does have Ukraine colors. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God help me. And people, and people say, and people say, why don't you do panel shows? That's what people say to me. They say lots of things to me. Sometimes they say, even they say, why don't you do panel shows? <laughs> you have to remember, maybe we all needed to be reminded. The damage. Oh, right. What a throwback to 2021. Now let's never do that again. <laughs> oh, man. That was pretty fun. I, I had fun. I, my, I, the problem is, is that the main feature of those shows is usually um, a lecture fan and CTV, and I genuinely don't know if they're people. Uh, like, I don't have fun talking to them because they don't believe anything they say. They just say stuff. Um, I, I, I like all the other... Um, I like arguing, though. Like, I think Counterpoint says some dumb shit sometimes, but holy shit, that guy definitely believes what he says, you know? I didn't expect to disagree on IRI. I, I completely forgot that IRI did the Zionist thing, man. Uh, sucks. Yeah, um... Oh, yeah, Alex Stein as well. Um, I mean, also Stein being there. Yeah, I don't really care that much about him doing this shit because it's a reminder that there's a limit to the political ambitions of the far right. Alex Stein's a Nazi. Um, he's definitely, like, a Nick Fuentes type. Um, and the problem is, like... There are always going to be limits to the political ambitions of people who have so little self-esteem that they'll go on panel shows literally just to make racist jokes and like rape jokes and pedophilia jo- like he, he you know what I mean like the the really dangerous uh far right people are the ones who are um measured enough to get into positions of power all the same that was pretty fun Aaron Simpson M the uh the wins are not something you should care about too much the Christmas debate was Peronism in the essence of politics. True! Stardust appearance hurt, a lot of appearances hurt. I don't think Stardust said anything bad while she was here. I mean, she basically just got sexually harassed a bunch, so I guess I feel bad for her. I mean, she said and done a lot of dumb stuff, but I, I don't think in the context of this specific engagement, she she did anything uh, uh, I, I have an issue with. Stardust said you were nice in her stream earlier. Yeah, I mean, Stardust has done stuff that I disagree with, but I think she's nice. I, I've talked to her. I mean, she was at the thing in D.C. She was very nice to talk to there. I know it comes across as kind of like, oh, well, I'm friends with a person and, you know, all that. But um, if, if a person's willing to be decent interpersonally, that's usually a pretty strong positive in, in, in other like elements of their character. IRL Stardust seems to be the most normal out of character. Yeah, yeah, no, she was just, uh, she was just nice to talk to. Is there anything you took away from that panel? I, I, I was kind of confused when I got, um, attacked over the proceduralism thing with Donald Trump. The point that I was trying to make, I don't know if I made it, like, I might have made it poorly. The, the point that I was trying to make is that when it comes to matters of constitutional interpretation, it is usually so variable that you could make arguments in a bunch of different directions, and you can make a proceduralist case for, like, one over another. Okay, let me... This is here's this is what I mean, okay? Imagine you have um, a sensitive political issue, and it relates to a constitutional ruling, and the constitutional ruling is kind of vague, and there are two ways you can ter- uh, interpret it. Now, let's say that there are an equal number of equally valid arguments for interpreting it in both ways. In one, like, let's just say in one direction a person is guilty, and in another direction a person is not guilty. And as far as you can tell, there are, like, equally valid interpretations that would lead you to one or the other. Now, imagine if one of those outcomes 
was very morally good and one of them was very morally wrong. Like it's on whether or not, I don't know, like a murderer can murder or something, like whether it was legal to do a murder because it was some like very vague, like jurisdiction issue or whatever. You know what I mean? Now, so you have an equally, so from, from a proceduralist perspective, it's like a 50-50 thing. But now that we've established that, now there's like the moral element. Does everyone understand what I'm arguing when it comes to proceduralism? This is a critical tenet of critical race theory and thus critical legal studies, which is essentially like there is no impartial uh, like legal interpretation or ruling. It's not possible. You can strive for it, but you'll always be informed by biases. So as long as you're informed by biases, it's good to be informed by the right ones. You know, like if bias is an unavoidable component of legal ruling, then it would be good if your biases are towards morally virtuous things like freedom or liberty or, you know, equality, than it would be if they were biased towards unvirtuous things. Oh, Killjoy 40k, again, there's not... Yeah, I do feel bad about that, Bablado. Not most of them, Rinaru. Pisco was absolutely rolling in a uh, lecture fan. It was nice to see. Yeah, I think Pisco actually did really good there. Um, I think... If I'm not following them already on Twitter, let me see. I am. Okay, yeah, Pisco Liddy. I see. Okay, that, that, that's good. Um, I personally don't subscribe much to policy wonkery, but I do respect people who do, as long as it's being framed, I guess, through the appropriate lens. Speaking of policy wonks who have gone down a dark road, I saw recently that um, Nate Silver, the the uh, the uh, 538 guy who like got let go, that's what happened, right? Uh, he was posting just some like insanely stupid shit about how like capitalism is human nature or whatever. You can be the best pollster in the world, but unless you check your ideological biases, you'll end up with stupid f pigs just like everyone else. You can be like a two trillion IQ, you know, uh, pollster. It, it doesn't matter. You it nothing substitutes good political theory. Nothing. Yeah, he always has been a weirdo, but I feel like he's gotten more weird since being let go. I, I mean, probably who wouldn't, right? Is it a good strat to say proceduralism is nerd beta male shit and we should only focus on the morality of it? No, no, because it is morally good to have consistent rules to follow. Um, you want law to be consistent because otherwise you don't really have, well, rule of law, which means you don't really have a good system for organizing society, removing dangerous people from society, deterring bad behavior, rewarding good behavior, so on and so forth. Um, Proceduralism is not innately bad. I just think that when it, when when the issue that you're ruling on is so up in the air in an interpretive sense, it might be a good idea to step back and contemplate which biases feed into which outcomes and what's more desirable and la di da di da. You, you, yeah, you get, you get me. Would you ever talk with Pisco on stream? Um, if there was some big need to, I I, I mean, you know, sure. A tweet from four hours ago. What is this? Kind of think that asymmetrical polarization, while more or less true 10 years ago, carries the seed of its own demise in that it convinced many left-leaning elites they can never be too extreme or as bad as the other guys. This is unimaginably stupid. Like, the left wing in the country right now is calling for an end to the genocide of the Palestinian people, and the right wing is openly stating their intentions of destroying our democracy. Look, what the you talking about like this would only be valid if like there were an equal number of insane tiktok uh campus uh osama bin laden stands or whatever you know uh like some ridiculous because like the the right is like the institution the institutionally the right is is in <sighs> whatever stupid stupid can't trust liberals stupid liberals